When do you realize that the game is over? When do you realize that you're all out of options? When do you realize that you've aged out? It's not a joke anymore. The class of 2000 has met reality. It's time. Greetings, brothers and sisters from around the world. Pull up a chair. It's time to get down to the business. I am your host, your brother, your humble servant, Mr. Jason Black. Back with you here again for another edition of the program that laid the foundation upon which all of your red pill, MGTOW, high value posers, alpha male frauds and wannabes have all stolen, ripped off and corrupted the game where they got it from is here. You'll hear them messing it up next week. You'll hear it here correctly now. And boy, oh boy, let me go ahead and just get right to it right now. Let me say this in no uncertain terms. For the class of 2000, all you chicks who come from the post-gangster rap era of the 90s, all you chicks out there who grew up listening to Destiny's Child, who grew up out there listening to Erica Badu and Lauryn Hill and all of you who are sitting up here idolizing the lowest common denominator because you thought it was cute. A bunch of y'all who came from the last remnants of you who came from two parent households, females who came from two parent households and had no respect and no appreciation for it. They idolized the chicks from the housing projects. Those of you who you thought a straight laced guy was too boring Those of you in the 2000s who were raised by the corrupted, hideously mutated music industry, as it were. Well, you're here to get your final report cards, and I got to tell you here, it's F's across the board. It doesn't matter who you were listening to. It doesn't matter who you gravitated to. It doesn't matter who you thought was cute, who you thought was fine, who you thought was running things. I am here to tell you the party is over. At this point now, the score is 40 and finished. The game is done. You either got your horse and you're riding off into the sunset or it's over for you. All the chicks who were the young up-and-comers that you were listening to, all you chicks from 2000, 2001, 2005, all of you there when Destiny's Child was still a quartet before it became a trio, all of you who were there with 50 Cent when he came out, you can find me at the club and you was bopping your heads, juvenile, back that ass up, oh, you thought all that was cute and everything, and then you sat up here and shook yo, you, you liked, uh, Mystical, shake your ass, watch yourself, and you shook your ass. Right in the single motherhood and down and outism and student loan debt. How about you now? How how, how about now? Where are you at? You talked about Beyonce and dream girls and whatnot. Well, Beyonce and Jennifer Hudson have both hit 40. Slightly apart from each other. They both hit 40. So all you chicks born in the 1980s, all you 80s babies, the game is over now. The game's over. Last call. For those of you who actually have a call left, but the majority of you don't, I am just here to bring you the message. I'm just here to report the news. The game is effectively over it doesn't matter who you was watching back then you can go digging through the discount bin go dig up a shanti if you want to go right ahead do whatever you want to there man it's not gonna get a hell of a whole lot better for you it really isn't you can tell yourself this is gonna get better oh no it's it's not at all gonna turn out the way in which you tell yourself it will it's not at all gonna turn out that way It's going to turn out radically different from that. 
there's a bunch of you sitting up here and you're listening to all the wrong influences. You listen to a bunch of dudes on the internet, usually broke, dusty, bummy, thirsty, desperate as hell. And they'll sit up here and tell you, you fine no matter what your age is. The problem is you all usually wait till you're middle age before you realize that likes don't translate into tangible benefits. Attention is what they strung you along with for years and years, or in some cases, decades. And you sat up here and didn't realize that, uh, that that doesn't really have a value. Attention doesn't actually have a value if that attention is not directly coupled to tangible benefits. It doesn't have any value. That's the issue that you're having here. You're having trouble figuring that out until it gets way too late in the game. So what do you do when your idols go over the hill and leave you sitting in the background? What do you do? Because that's where you all are now. Bay, Beyonce is over 40 now. Jennifer Hudson over 40. Ashanti over 40. It doesn't matter who you name and who you go with there. If you were coming up in the 2000s and the game is over. And oh yeah, by the way, just in case you wanted to tell yourself that Ashanti was killing the game and whatnot, uh, on the one side of the screen, you see Ashanti. You see Ashanti over there on the right-hand side of the screen. On the left-hand side of the screen, oh, there's Ashanti a little bit closer up on her 40th birthday. A little bit closer up now. Not quite what you were expecting. Not quite what you were thinking. A little bit closer up there now. I want everybody to like, subscribe, but most importantly, share this. We're going to be hurting feelings. For somebody to just tell the truth, I am saying the words directly without qualifiers. All you 80s babies, females, the game is over. Cash in your chips. 40 and over. And to be totally honest with you, I'm being kind by saying 40. I'm ringing the alarm is what I'm attempting to do. I'm ringing the alarm. Because there's a bunch of you who haven't kept up with the way things really are. Because I'm being kind right now. Because there's a bunch of them out there who, oh boy, it gets worse. It gets a whole lot worse. These fellas, these females went looking for easy to get attention. They went looking for attention rather than accomplishments. The men who have accomplishments require things of you. Fellas giving out attention that's cheap, easy, and free on the internet. You can get fanboys to give you attention. Problem. A producer isn't a fanboy. And a bunch of y'all, the chicks who you were sitting up here and you were putting on, after you put down your My Little Pony and you picked up your little, first time you ever picked up a Sephora makeup case. And oh boy, back in the day, you and Kim Kardashian were young. You and Lauren Hill were still spry. You and the, the brat was still cute. And oh man, 20 years later here, here we go. These chicks ain't over the hill. These chicks are over the rainbow at this point. Did you know Lauren Hill was 46? And did you know that she's wasn't as old as the brat? Did you know the brat's 47? How many of you knew that? How many of you kept up to date with that? How many of you were still keeping accurate score of exactly where your idols fall in the pecking order? Tell me, what do you think? I want you all to ask yourselves an objective question right now. What is it you think that Lauren Hill with three or four bastard kids is going to pull at the age of 46? You tell me, what is it you think she's going to get? For those of you out there desperately telling yourself, well, she's still looking good. Well, she's still Lauren Hill. Okay, for all of you brain dead dunderheads, what is it exactly that you think she's going to get what do you think she's going to be eligible for what is it you believe at this date that she actually qualifies for at 46 
All right, now let me go ahead and clear up a couple of things here because it's time for us to go ahead and give you a reminder about that age thing. And the the brat is 47. For all of the clowns out there talking about the brat still look good at 47, here's the problem. It's a bunch of females who do not speak for the men that the brat wants to be with. And for the dude saying she looks good, all you mean is, well, she passes the requirement to be eligible for sex. Problem, the brat wants more than sex. And if she wants sex from you, by the way. From a male. What are you offering the brat? Because sex is not a benefit. The brat wants to know what you're going to do to elevate her life. At 47. So the females talking about she still looks good. Your opinion is irrelevant because you don't speak for the producers that the brat wants to be with. You don't speak for us. And for the fellas talking about she still looks good. You ain't offering her anything she wants. Either because you are incapable or unwilling. But what you're not offering to do is to buy her a Rolls Royce. Mic drop. You're not offering to buy her a $5 million house. You're not offering to take her to the Fendi store or the Prada store to maintain her lifestyle. You aren't offering any tangible benefits. you like, hey, brat, would you like to lay up with me? Yeah, you begging for sex like you do from every other female. You're not offering her anything. So your quote unquote compliment is empty, meaningless and ridiculous. You're not offering anything. Oh, you say I lay up with that. Well, you'd lay up with anything. But what you're not doing is saying, hey, brat, you so sexy, I would finance your life. I would take care of you. I see so much value. You still have so much residual sexual value that I'm willing to finance and maintain and pay for your lifestyle. Now, you notice none of the dudes talking about she looked, she looked cute. None of you are saying that. And yes, about the LGBT thing, we've known that now for decades. The real point is you still got plenty of fellas out here talking about how cute she is. But notice you're not offering her anything. That's why your opinion is stupid and worthless. And you gas up the heads of dumb females out there because she believes that when guys say, "Ooh, you still cute, that they mean you are cute and I would pay, I would finance, I see value, I would, that my opinion of your cuteness comes coupled with tangible benefits. And that isn't what it is. When he says you look cute, that's all he means. He doesn't mean anything beyond that. And now y'all got chicks in their 30s, 40s, 50s, or older who are still living the delusion that when you clowns on the internet in your huge throngs and masses sit here and you fellas out here dusty, bummy, broke, and uh, uh, medically, surgically attached to your keyboards on your cell phones sit up here and say they're cute they still think that means well one of y'all in that mix is a doctor there's a doctor in there somewhere i mean i'm talking about a head doctor a chief surgeon there's a fella making two million dollars a year or more in there somewhere that's what they really believe that when they take a look at this avalanche of meaningless, superfluous, vapid, smokescreen comments on the internet, that somewhere in that mix, there is a doctor, there is a uh, industrialist, there's a tycoon, there's a fella in there who will see her through her final decades and will finance her life and not just maintain it, but elevate it. And you all have deceived them into believing there's somebody in there that if they just go sifting through this haystack, they'll find a needle in a haystack. And in reality, it's just a needle in a stack of needles. But there is no producer in there. So we were doing good on the first page with Jennifer Hudson and Beyonce and Ashanti turning 40. Oh, it's all downhill from there. It's all downhill. All downhill. And that was the nice side of it. Oh, you don't want to know for the class of 2010. Y'all don't want to know what yours is looking like. 
for the class, the class of 2000, all you chicks born in the 80s and whatnot, the 80s and early 90s. Oh, it's running out quick for your asses. It's running out quick for you. For some of you who thought you were safe, uh uh-uh. Take a look. Janae Aiko, 33. Already been strung out on drugs. Already been run through. Tatted up. Hood ratted up. 33 years old. No prospects. No man of any substance who will take her seriously. Ciara. The only reason I'm including her is because Heffa, you know you running your Britney Renner scam. You know you are. I ain't hating on you for it, but I'm not going to pretend just because he pretended he don't see it doesn't mean I'm going to pretend I'm not seeing it. So she running her Britney Renner scam. Gone. In the chat room, they said Maya. Yeah, we can run down the list of names. All those chicks from the early 2000s who had an R&B album, all of them. Melissa Ford, all the video vixens and whatnot. Oh, the game is over. That's it. The dough is locked. The dough is locked. You're not hitting the wall. The wall is hitting you. Let me say that again, because niggas going to steal this. And, you know, just remember where they got it from. Th- these chicks ain't hitting the wall. The wall is hitting them. That's where we at right now. They're not hitting the wall. The wall is hitting them. They're getting hit by the wall. That's where they're at now. They're getting hit by the wall. The wall is falling on them. Last but not least, the queen, the modern day queen of whoredom herself, of corporate uh, music whoredom herself, Nicki Minaj. There she is. Oh, what do you know? 38. And her husband makes a whole lot less than her, a sexual degenerate on his way to prison, on his way to jail. That's what she qualified for. After all this time, all this sluttery, all the rest of this nonsense, and she qualified for a damn sex offender who can't do a damn thing for her. And then Amber Rose. And then Black China. And then all the others. To the class of 2000. 40 and finished. Did you think this is the way it was going to turn out? Did you see this coming here? Did you really believe this was the way it was going to turn out? I mean, was this the plan? When you all were sitting there shaking your butt cheeks, was this the plan? When you were shaking your ass to Lil Jon and the East Side Boys and all the booty shaking music and you never grew up, was this your plan? Did you, did you predict and was this the way you intended for things to go? Because that's sure as hell where you're at now. That's sure as hell where you are now. This is where you're at. All of your idols are aging out of the game. And they don't have much better prospects than you do. And they're celebrities. The chicks in their 30s. Rihanna. We can go down the list there too. By the way, Rihanna. She ain't got no prospects. 30 and dirty is turning into 40 and finished. How many of you made this calculus? How many of you who are following up buying this stuff? How many of you were saying, okay, well, th- this is a part of the game. This was the plan all along. How many of you were saying that? How many of you, this was the game. This was what you intended all along. I'm willing to wager none of you. Because you don't think about it. Because you want to believe the ride's going to go on forever. Because you want to believe that. But the ride ends. The ride ends, and in many cases here, it ends disastrously. So you're stuck. You're 40 years old or older. And if you haven't chosen a horse... If you haven't picked a horse, if you haven't chosen one by now, if you ain't got one out of the stables, man, look here. I don't know what you think is coming over that horizon. 
I don't know what you think is, but I'm here to tell you, whatever it is you tell yourself, man oh man, I got a feeling it's not going to go at all the way you think. And just so you have some perspective on this, wanted to show you a little bit of something here. Let's do a quick side by side. Let's do a quick side by side in case you thought these chicks didn't understand what it is they had to bargain with. Go ahead and take a look at your screens here right quick. You can see the pictures that we have up. And you can see the pictures they had. Take a look at it. They turned 40 and oh, look, let me go celebrate 40. Celebrate 40 how? By getting back out here in the sexual marketplace and seeing is there yet one more horse in the stable? One more ticket to ride the train at the station for me to hop on. And hopefully the dudes looking don't do their due diligence at what they're going to buy. Hopefully they will be so enraptured by these phony ass Photoshop pictures online that he won't actually do any due diligence. And he won't actually check the paperwork and look under the hood. And go see, well, let me go meet you in person first before I commit to anything. Shout out to Shanti. So, yeah, they're checking to see. Um, hopefully there's a few guys left who will not care what's under the hood. And won't check. You all did so much playing around between the years 2000 and 2015. You did so much playing around. You did not take the game seriously. You did not do an inventory and say to yourself, where do I want to be? You were running hot girl summer before there was a hot girl summer because you told yourself you had some type of female privilege and let's just keep it real ladies. The real reason that the eighties babies went through here, flying through, they flying through life, through they draws is because let's will you all be honest with yourselves you told yourselves it didn't matter what you did sexually because what you did your panties were so damn valuable that at the last you were gonna milk this thing to the very end you were gonna squeeze every bit of juice out of this thing you were just going to ride the rails as tacky as you wanted to be. And so long as there were three guys who wanted to lay up with you, when it was all over at the last minute, you were going to throw this Hail Mary pass, this buzzer beater. You were going to sit up here and, and, and at the last minute, you were going to just take whatever you could get. And that you would ride, that you pretty much told yourself, well, I'm guaranteed to be able to pull something. Can you chicks be honest with yourselves that that was the game you've been playing now for over 20 years, that you knew what you were doing the whole time. You knew that men of substance did not approve, but you felt that you were immune from consequences and the game you were willing to play is, well, fine. I don't need to get a top tier producer. I'll make a little money for myself. Take care of me, the bastard kids over here and whatnot. And at the last minute, 11.59 p.m., a minute before the clock strikes 12, I'm going to run out here and go snag whatever I can get. Like like the shopping spree at Toys R Us. I, whatever I can lay my hands on and grab it, I'm going to run out the door with it. That's what you were playing. You overlooked the producers because you didn't care about it and you didn't regard it and you didn't value it. And you told yourself my sexuality will buy me half an alpha. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm not going to have a real producer, but my sexuality, I'm just going to have fun because I value that more than anything. I value thrill more than anything. So these draws are going to get me thrill seeking. And at the last minute, I won't, I know I won't qualify for a 100% producer. Let me see if I can qualify for a 50% producer or a 25% producer. And I'll, that'll be a consolation prize. And what you found out 
is that's not the way the world works. There are no half of producers. There is no dude in the top 15% waiting to do what the guys in the top 5% would not do. It's not there. You're 40 and finished. You're 40 and done. And if you haven't gotten your horse and a ticket to ride, the game is over. It doesn't matter whether you're in California or Calabasas, in Charlotte, or Rhode Island or Redmond. Doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter. This is the global situation. All you chicks in the 2000s, the class of 2000s, it's over. Everybody who was out there specializing in shaking your butt cheeks, you never grew up, you never took reality seriously, you don't have anything. You've, you've got no leverage. If you haven't already cashed in, you ain't got nothing. Game's over. Game's over. In the chat room, talking about Portia Williams. Portia's on TV, baby. Where you at? In the chat room on YouTube. No shade. No shade. All this fantasizing and make-believe, you better stop with the make-believe and get to some make-real if you still have that option. Otherwise, it's going to be you looking at reruns of Basketball Housewives. And meanwhile, what's, what's your housewife status? Let's just keep it real. Let's just keep it real. I'm trying to ask the questions here that I want you to understand. You can sit up here and do whatever you want to here. Jennifer Hudson's 40 years old. What, what, what are we offering her? What are we offering? What is she really eligible for at 40? She got a couple of kids by David Otunga who was smart enough not to marry her ass. And now she's just a 40-year-old single mom. That's where she's at. Some clowns were talking about she was married. No, she wasn't. Where are you at today? Where are you at? You better make the right damn decisions. And when you make a decision, you damn well better stand by it. I was the only, the only, the only person. And to this day, the your, your so-called black manosphere, these guys are so dumb, so misguided, and so naive and ignorant, they don't understand. I was the guy who told you all, oh, Kim Kardashian's done. You only get one alpha. You only get one alpha per lifetime. That's it. That's it. That's it. Kim is done. She ain't going to get another Kanye. Baby, you 40 years old with three kids by Kanye West. Ain't nobody trying to follow up behind that. And what are you going to do? You going to be satisfied working for the fork, uh, getting booed up with the forklift driver at Target? That's going to make you happy now? That's going to make you happy now. How you going to do that? Baby, you 40, you're, a 40, you're essentially a 40-year-old single mom now. The game is over for you. That's it. I hope you enjoyed it. I don't know what you thought was going to be waiting out here for you, but let's just keep it real. You ain't going to be happy with that. Lauren Hill went through her. She was always a corny, square-ass chick, so she put on this Afrocentric queen thing here and whatnot and, and she wasn't nothing but just a square ass hoe and take a look at where she's at what is she expecting at 46 you're a felon I'm not gonna sit up here and hang that around your neck but I would be remiss if you a, a single mother felon and the tour is over what you expecting niggas to do for you at 46 Lil Kim Foxy Brown. What, what are you expecting fellas to do with you in your 40s? What, what benefits, what rewards, what is the highest degree of reward you're expecting a man to give at this point? What are you expecting? What do you think you're in line for? 
how many hurdles do you think that men are going to jump for you to get a 46 year old single mom? Exactly. Who are you expecting? Oh, well I'll settle. Baby, there's not enough dudes out there to settle for, but go ahead and try that. You'll be very unhappy very quickly, but give it a shot. Go ahead. But just understand she's that's not really what she wants at the end of the day if you're not truly satisfied where you are you ain't gonna be able to fake it no what you think you're gonna do is you think you're gonna grab a guy and then go kick him in the ass that's not gonna happen kim's not gonna be able to do that there is not another kanye out there waiting to get her there's another there might be another dude out there waiting to see well what was what was it that ray j and kanye got to experience but they're not looking to pick up where ray j and kanye left off at let me say that one more time for the knuckleheads in the back kim and lauren and, and Jennifer Hudson and anybody else you can name. Yeah, you might be able to get another dude. But what you're not going to do is get another man who is looking to take up where your exes left off at. Now that they're not trying to do. They're not looking to do that. There is no dude out here chomping at the bit to buy Kim Kardashian $25,000 ear diamond earrings. While he's walking up and down the beach holding Kanye's children. Ladies, there is no guy out here looking to buy you a Range Rover while he's carrying Kanye's kids. It ain't happening. That's a fantasy you're feeding yourselves. And what you'll tell yourself is, well, I'm in survival mode. I'll just go ahead and take what I can get and we'll make it do. That's going to, you tell yourself in your head, if you weren't willing, if you didn't have that type of discipline with Kanye, if you didn't have that type of discipline with any of these other dudes, how, what makes you think you're going to suddenly inherit that type of discipline when you're in your forties and set in your ways that you were making these mistakes before you were in your forties and completely set in your ways. What the hell makes you think all of a sudden you're going to wake up in your forties and become more docile and cooperative and submissive and complimentary. That's not going to happen. You're going to be even more angry. Let me go ahead and explain what I mean by that. Oh boy, I'm turning all the sacred cows into hamburger. Any dude who gets with Jennifer Hudson today, and I don't mean to sit up here and dredge up some unpleasantness, but I got to say it like it is. If you know anything about Jennifer Hudson's family, I've covered this before on the Black Channel, but if you know about her family and whatnot, oh, you know what you're dealing with. You know where she comes from and you know what you're dealing with. You know what you're dealing with. So if you're going to grab a 40-year-old single mom from the projects, they got that project pedigree. Baby, you think dudes are waiting in the wings to sit up here and jump off into that? You can tell yourself there's an upside to that. But a fella's not sitting here looking here saying, well, let me go ahead and take up where he left off at. That man you are with, that's the dude right there. That's the dude. Everybody else is going to see if they can figure out how to bid down or nothing. Because what are they losing? And you got to be honest enough to say that to yourself. Am I saying too much? Okay, I'm offending people. I'm offending people now. They don't want to hear this. They don't want to hear the truth about this. No, what you want to hear is you want to hear somebody sit up here and tell you if you pulled one David Otunga, you can pull another one. That's what you want to hear. You want to hear that. You want to hear if you pull one Kanye, you can pull another one. That's what you want to hear. 
You want to hear if you could pull a one Dre, you can pull another one. That's what you want to hear. You want to hear if you could pull one Michael P. Jordan, you can pull another one. These are the biggest lies in the world being told. You have a bunch of females sitting around telling each other about what they can pull. and Ain't nobody pulled nothing. You have a bunch of folks sitting up here telling each other what they're eligible for and ain't nobody got nothing. Nobody got nothing. They're sitting around going year after year speculating over what they can get. But let's be very, very clear. If Jennifer Hudson picked up a dude tomorrow making a third of what David Otunga was getting from the WWE or whatever. You can sit up here and tell yourself that you're willing to go to a middle-class life. I'll be damned. That's not the way the female psyche works. You were always, always, look, what you are is entitled. You're entitled by nature. You ain't going to turn that switch off. You can sit up here and delude yourself. If you get with this fella sitting up here, um, uh, Spraying the plants at Home Depot. You can sit up here and tell yourself that you're going to get with the garden manager at Walmart and you'll be okay. You will punish that nigga every day of his life. You are going to punish him every day of his life. You know why? Because you will never forget where you were. And a female never wants to step down. You will always demand that at some point you don't give a damn if this nigga is 25 or 65. At some point you are expecting him to return you back where you were. That's what you are expecting. You are expecting at some point this dude is going to take you back where you were. If you were used to shopping at Nordstrom's and Bloomingdale's, I'll be damned if you're going to be happy going to Walmart and Kohl's and that's where the ceiling is. You can tell yourself, oh, I'll be okay over here. You are going to punish that fella every single day. You know why? Because that's your practice. If you've been doing that for 20, 25 years, how are you going to tell you, delude yourself in the saying you're going to do something different? He's going to come home after a hard day of work and you're going to be looking at those brochures to go to Tahiti, to go to Maui, and then dude's going to be sitting up here for your birthday. You're going to be thinking about going to Tahiti and Maui or whatever, and then you're going to have a fella sitting up here talking about, well, maybe we can take a weekend off. And as soon as he says that, you're not going to be able to hide that inside. It's going to be like, oh, bummy ass nigga. You're going to say it under your breath, your, 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 your countenance, look it up. Your facial expression is going to change. As soon as he starts putting limitations on you, limitations you did not previously have to live with, you're going to change up. You're going to go from, well, you know, it's all right. I'll be okay over here. It's going to go from that to you. Bummy ass, unproductive ass, dusty ass, grimy ass, low level ass nigga. I could have stayed where I was. All my cats in their 40s and 50s know you done walk that line. You done seen that. You ain't met a broad set up here and say, was happily stepped down. That doesn't happen. How many of y'all are with a female who was with a dude who made a lot more money than you and everything in y'all's relationship is going just fine? Well, Jason, she's happy being with me making a third what that dude was making there. Why, is she perfectly fine. She don't give me no problem, Jason. Well, yeah, if she's a size 32, I imagine she doesn't. I imagine she doesn't if she tips the scales at a... Petite, gingerly 290 pounds. Yeah, I bet you getting full-fledged cooperation. I bet you do. But if you're with a chick who's still telling herself, I'm 40 and still got it. I'm 45 and still got it. I'm 47 and still got it. Take a look. My likes on Instagram are popping. My likes on Facebook are popping. 
If she's telling herself that, dude, you know full damn well, she is still handing out flyers. She's still handing out applications. She's still hoping there's one last ticket to ride. And at any moment, she can punch yours. You know why? Because there's no consequences for doing so. Even if she has a kid with you, the the system is not going to hold her responsible in that way. So as far as she's concerned, at least she tells herself, even if it's not practical, even if it's not realistic, she tells herself, well, I can cash out whenever I want to. I can cash out whenever I want to. I got that option. It ain't going to be pretty, but I can do it. It ain't going to be pretty, but I can do it. That's what she tells herself. How the hell are you going to sit up here and be dating the manager at Pep Boys and be okay with that? If the Remember, fellas, let me go ahead and put you up on a little bit of game tonight. As a man, remember what I taught you. That you only you don't have to do better than Jay-Z. You don't have to do better than... than uh, an NBA player, you don't have to do better than Kanye. You don't have to do better than that. You just have to do better than her last two boyfriends if she's worth that. You only have to do better than them. Okay, but let me put you up on something else. You only have to do better than her exes. Adjusted for inflation. You only have to do better than her exes. Adjusted for depreciation. Oh boy. Well, we're going to get into a whole bunch of trouble now, huh? But that's the real. That is the real. You only have to do better than the X's. Adjusted for inflation. Adjusted for depreciation. Why? Because she's the seller and you're the buyer. And at the end of the day, that's what you're buying. In the chat room, fellas said that uh, men are have lost patience with older females. Well, the problem is, as I've always taught you all, the problem with older females is that they tend to be stuck in their ways. That's the problem. When a female becomes set in her ways, she becomes uncoachable. She becomes uncoachable. You're not able to do anything with her. You need her to be formed and shaped to be appropriate for you. But if she's been formed and shaped for someone else or she is, she's been rubbed so raw And she's so dense, she's so desensitized, she's so emotionally disconnected or so emotionally rebellious that she's so resistant that she simply cannot be molded to what you need. That's it. She's set in her ways. She's set in her ways. What else are you going to do? A younger female brings naivete, lack of experience, uh, definitely entitlement issues. But you have something you don't have with an older female. You have time. Well, at least she's got time. You might not have time. It depends. You might not have it. I'm asking a basic fundamental question right here. In case you want to say that I'm being prejudicial or whatever, ask yourselves a question here. What, What are you going to get? What does the brat think she's going to get in the sexual marketplace? What can you redeem a 47-year-old LGB, a chick who's been with dudes and gals? What do you expect to get for that? You can talk about how cute she is or whatever at 47. Yeah, you're cute for a 47-year-old. What can we get? What what, what does a 47-year-old LGBT chick who's been run through by dudes and guys and gals, what is that worth? A 46-year-old single mom who's been run through by the industry. What's that worth? A 40-year-old Armenian thought who comes with her own porn videos. What is that worth? Well, how much can you redeem that for in the marketplace? What can you get for that? And is that the best you can do? 
Ladies, I'm here tonight to go ahead and drop some negative vibes on you. I'm here tonight to go ahead and tell you about being 40 and finished. I'm here tonight to tell you that all those likes that you were betting the farm on, and can we keep it real? You were betting the farm that all those likes on Instagram and Facebook that you would one day be able to return to the sexual marketplace and redeem those likes for something tangible. Can you be honest with yourself about that for a moment? You're going to have to be because you're going to have to be honest with father time and reality. You were expecting that all this internet attention that could be taken out of your cell phone and redeemed for something real. That's what you were expecting. That you are going to be able to go out into the sexual marketplace and that the value you have on social media, which is really only be, which is really only giving you a reflection of what the thirstiest and bummiest dudes think. Let me go ahead and tell you something right now. I want to I want to make you all very, very aware of something. When you see these kind of videos and these kind of chicks out there and whatnot, when you see the comment sections and the comment sections lit up, the guys who you're going to see two types of guys who respond to videos and pictures like this. You're going to see only two types of guys. You're going to see guys who can't do any better. And then you're going to see guys for whom sex ain't new to them. And the fellas, you can tell the fellas who are thirst buckets. You can tell the fellas who don't have a lot of sexual options because they're the ones who leave all, they're the ones who leave all the thumbs up comments. The fellas who leave the comments talking about, hey, that's, that's tacky. The chicks on Instagram, they used to just show their naked backsides. Now they're showing their naked front sides. You can tell the fellas for whom sex isn't new because those are the guys who say, hey, that's tacky. That, 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 there ain't nothing nice about that. The fellas who are thirst buckets and desperate, them the guys sitting up here talking about, hey, ma, shake them cheeks, baby, wifey material, so on and so forth. Yeah, it's real easy to talk about wife material when you ain't going to do nothing. It's real easy to talk about, talk about wife material when you have nothing to lose because you have nothing to offer. The guys who are thirsty are the ones who leave thumbs up comments every time a female is throwing her legs open or swinging open her butt cheeks. Those are the guys who do that. The fellas who actually have access and options, those are the ones who say, hey, uh uh-uh, we got standards over here. We got standards over here. The guys who are never going to produce anything, they don't have standards for a woman because they don't have standards for themselves. He's not going to hold you to a standard because he's not going to hold himself to a standard. You're not going to hold yourself to a standard. That's the blatant truth about it here. In the chat room, Fella calls himself king. I would love to see what's so royal about him. The telephone lines are now open. Since you've got so much to say, the telephone lines are now open. The number is 646-787-1933. That's 646-787-1933. Your personal access code to the program that laid the foundation upon which all these other folks out here are merrily screwing things up. This is your time to go ahead and give us a call here. And anybody from our mods, anybody who's had anything of dissent to say, we've opened the phone lines for them now. So now they don't have to say it in the chat room. They can go ahead and say it here now. And they can say it directly to us here. So the telephone number is 646-787-1933. That's 646-787-1933. And let's go ahead and you can give us a call on that. I'm talking to you now about 40 and 40 plus and finished. I'm telling you right now what your mamas and your grandmamas and the internet will not tell you. But you already know this. Let's be very, very clear. The females already know this. They already know the phone stopped ringing like that when they were 33 and 34. 
The phones got real quiet then. They didn't just get quiet yesterday. The phone been getting quiet. The DMs been getting sparse. The DMs been getting full of dudes who you can just see, and eh, this nigga ain't about nothing. It's been like that for a minute. And you have become completely discontent with the fantasizing. Fantasizing that, well, Beyonce got it, I can get it. Reality's sinking in, and Beyonce got it, and you were sitting there bobbing your head and shake checking your ass to her songs, but Beyonce got it and put your ass in the trick bag. She got it, you ain't gonna get it. Even the chicks out there you thought could get it. Jennifer Hudson, eh, can't get it. Ashanti, eh, can't get it. Kim K, couldn't keep it. Lauren Hill, couldn't get it. DeBrat, couldn't get it. Now they're out here trying to make do for themselves. Where's that leave you at? Where's your internet fanboys? You see, the problem with social media is that it's created the capacity for any random female to attract fanboys. The most desperate and lame. And all those dudes can contribute to your life is a like and a thumbs up. Never elevated. Never paid tribute. Never left you with a tangible reward. Done t- You've been all- dating fellas forever here, and the most he's ever done for you is buy you a damn t-shirt. And went half on a meal at uh, Applebee's. That's the extent to what you gotten. But nothing that you would fight with another female over. Let's be very, very clear about that. It ain't nothing you would fight with another female over. Nothing like that at all. It's nothing you would fight over. And there's the real issue. You got the the, the measurement we use here is whether or not this is a dude who's got something worth fighting over. Worth fighting for. Is it worth cutting the knees out from under another broad for it? If the fella you with doesn't have three factors of his life worth fighting over. At least two, and another female would literally fight you over that you would actually want to keep for the rest of your life. Oops, there goes Mr. Uh, Swag. There goes that. Because you know, Swag ain't going to see you through to retirement. Yeah, if you don't have that, you ain't got nothing. You ain't got nothing. Let's go ahead and open up the phone lines here. The number is 646-787-1933. That's 646-787-1933. Your personal access code to the business. I want to thank everyone who has contributed to our program here today. So thank you very much for that. We appreciate that. I know you could have gone off and tricked it off at the club, but you didn't do that. So OGK, thank you. Sultan of Rum, Ogo, and everybody else who has contributed to the program here. Thank you very much. Let's go ahead and take a few phone calls. Let me get caller from area code 914. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Mighty Mike from the Boogie Down Bronx. How you doing, Jason? Mike from the Bronx. What's on your mind? Uh, I've listened to your show for quite a few years, and I enjoy every one of them. I just want to say I'm in my 60s. I'm in my mid-60s, so I got... You know, I got offspring in their 40s. And I'm going to tell you that 40-year-old age group was, they're all very, very outspoken. They're outspoken age group. And uh, the way I see it is, uh, and and I'm assuming that, you know, that a lot of people will agree with me on that because they show, you know, very, uh, some, some, a lot of contempt for us older people. I just want to say that. But um, they were very outspoken, and now that outspoken uh, attitude is, is going to turn into a lot of independent thinking. So in my opinion, I don't think these 40-year-old women are really looking for anybody to settle down with. That's you you have opinion. to, look, you have to, you have to be able to identify the warning signs. You have to identify the warning signs early because you see the warning signs. If a fella is unproductive, And I mean willfully unproductive. He has no skills, no drive, no desire at 25. You'd be a fool to believe he's going to inherit that. The odds are overwhelmingly good. He's going to stay that way by the time he's 45. If a female is slick at the mouth at 25, 
you need to take that as a warning. You need to recognize that as a warning. Don't be surprised. At the same time, that's it. Uh, go ahead. Don't be surprised when I'm she's just... already a problem. Yeah, but that's a different age group. This 40, I'm telling you, the 40-year-olds uh, are very outspoken. I think they were raised that way. I'm an older man. I'm like, you know, I, when they were born, I was like 25. So I had kids when I was 25. But that 40-year-old age group is very outspoken, and they, they harbor a lot of contempt for us older people. I don't know whether they realize it or not, but we can't as much experience and know-how as we bring to the table. We're in their way. That's how they look at it. That's how they see it. And I've seen it happen time and time again. So, I mean, that, that type of defiance is really going to turn into an independent person. You can call it being by the, they can be by themselves. I'm sure it won't bother them much at all because they'll come and go as they please. And like I said already, I don't really think they're looking for anybody. I really don't. To settle down with not one person. Well, I mean, it, afford, that's the definition of lifestyle. If you're talking about that, that count, well, that's the definition of defeated. If she know, look, the problem is they put on a brave face with us. It's real easy to talk some crap in front of us. What's hard is to get your ass out here in the street and go make good on all that tough talk you were doing. It's real easy to say what you can yeah, pull when, when you sitting and arguing with somebody. That's easy. Getting out here and pulling it, that's hard. Yeah, absolutely. I'll let you have the last word. Absolutely. But when they see, but when they see me out there, I'm in their way. Trust me, I know what I'm talking about. Because I play music, and you know, and I hang out sometimes. But most of the time, I'm trying to stay out of their way because that's the impression they give me. They, I mean, the, my experience and my know-how and how to do things don't make a. a, a they, they they're ready to make their mistakes, and they don't care whether the same mistakes we made when they were the, we were their age or not. They just want us out of their way. And that's how I see it uh, with the, with that age group and uh, B1. Good talking with you. Take care. Well, thank you very much for giving us a call here. Let me get uh, let me grab caller from area code 419. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? My name is Joe. I'm calling from Toledo. Joe from Toledo. What's on your mind? I can always say you keep it 100. And you are one hundred percent right. Forty, they done. I for some reason I'll sit this at forty. If you don't already have a man, or if you haven't been married for a while, and still have your husband, and you're still together, and you out there in the single life on these dating sites, out there trying to hook up with someone, and you have three or four kids, you hit the nail on the head with that. They they are really done. And here's the key to what what I like what you say. Not only just the millionaire women that are in their 40s, but also the ones that are economically challenged, especially ones that are economically challenged, you know, living off the government. They want six-figure guys, and they never, ever had that. So you hit the nail on the head, and especially on the perspective of the economically challenged ones. Could you, could you elaborate on that one a little bit for me? Okay. Um, can you clarify what you meant by your last part that can be challenged? You know, it can not be challenged. It lives off the government. That's, you know, Section 8, you know, that lives in the, you know, those, the, the ladies that are economically challenged living off of Section 8 and the government. They they even want, and in 40s, and they 40s still living off of the government. They still out there looking for six-figure men. So, I mean, the psyche of ladies, like you say, it's over with and done, even with the millionaires. If you had a husband that was a multimillionaire and now you don't have him, I agree with you. It's you're done. But the the key that I always see is these ladies that are economically challenged, living off the government, they think they can land a six-figure man. Well, they certainly can fantasize about it. And this is something I've been talking about here before recently. You know, what it is, brother, is that, you know, you got folks who sit up here and it used to be, it used to be that, Women who, you know, they were single moms, or they were 40 years old or whatever, they understood what they were eligible for and they knew the difference between fantasy and reality. That's the difference. So they would, they, you, know, you remember the old Calgon take me away commercials, you know, they, they knew the difference. I mean, look, they used to know the difference. 
social media has created a world where the females are free now to fantasize that even though the reality and the reality is what they see on the street in their city. Cause the truth of the matter is these chicks are not going around the world pulling better guys. They're just going around the country now getting flued out and racking up their body counts around the country as opposed to racking them up in their city where they're from. But make no mistake about it. It's not like the, it's not like the internet has expanded their sexual options and thus expanded their relationship options. The internet has simply expanded their sexual options. And that's it. That's all it's done. If you were not wife material in Toledo, you're not going to suddenly become wife material in Orlando. If you were not wife material in New Orleans, you're not going to suddenly become wife material in New Hampshire. If you were not wife material in Washington, D.C., you're not going to suddenly become wife material in Washington, Seattle. Not going to happen. And it used to be that females had to face reality and face it early because there wasn't an infrastructure and a society that would reinforce your delusions. Today, brother, there's big money to be made off of reinforcing females' delusions. It used to be there wasn't really a market for it. It used to be the the height of the market was makeup. Today, man, it's a, playing into females' delusions is a multi-billion dollar industry now. multi billion dollar industry so yeah it used to be you couldn't just sit around and delude yourself today social media has has congregated all of those females together it's aggregated all those females together in in huge millions and millions of throngs sloppy inarticulate buck tooth bad hair overweight the, all of the things that when it now is, is gotten them all together in throngs. And what they're doing is rather than having a therapy session, rather than having a therapy session and saying, okay, let's be honest with ourselves about where we actually are. They are instead pretending to themselves. They've got something that they don't. They're all sitting around yeah. instead of sitting around criticizing each other, which is what men do at least the ones who wasn't raised by bastard baby makers or at least figured out how to get mature at some point. You see, when men get together, what do we do? We start focusing on our weaknesses. We start focusing on where we're weak. We start focusing on how do we get your game up and get that together. When we're in an environment where it's just men, we start focusing on, okay, how do I step my game up? When the females get together, now they start focusing on emboldening each other in where they're at girl ain't nothing wrong with you he just didn't appreciate that day why you good just the way you are it's plenty of men want a size 18 wow you're so right so understand as because now and the reason for that brother is because as men there is a punishment mechanism for a man who doesn't perform when a man doesn't perform, he gets punished for it. You and I understand, that, especially as black men, when you don't perform, you get punished. That's why you're seeing this spike in property crimes. I talked about this since the beginning of the year. This spike in property crimes, carjacking, stealing catalytic converters. What the hell kind of crackhead stuff is this? Well, the dope game is dried yeah. up. They dried up the dope game. They put all the kingpins in prison for life or killed them. All of them are doing life sentences or killed them. The dope game, as you knew it, is done. Weed has been legalized, so all the easy-to-move weight ain't on the streets anymore. So you can't even really be the little local drug dealer like you used to be. Now it ain't nothing but felony work out there right now. It's nothing out there right now but felony work. People don't carry cash like that anymore. So you can't be a stick-up boy. And take people's credit cards and stuff like that. Now they got all these security features. You can't do that. You can't uh, go boost a car when the folks go in their house because they got key fobs and electronic tra- uh, electronic control. So you got to wait until the person gets to the car, which means you have to have a gun, which means from the beginning, the car is worth more than $300. So that's an automatic property felony. You're committing a felony with a handgun. So that's going to be an automatic 10, 20 year sentence. First offense, 
even if it's your first offense, you're automatically looking at a good 20 years in places like Florida, Mississippi. It's going to be an automatic 20 years. And more and more states are going to start doing that now. Um, You're still in catalytic converters. If you don't get killed in the process, it's still going to be an automatic felony. So you got young fellas out here doing that. Why? Well, if they can't get a job, they don't have any skills because mama was a slut. Daddy was a deadbeat. He doesn't know what to do with himself. But the world expects him to perform. So he was in high school where he could imitate future and be Mr. Swag and have his future fantasy. And then the very next day after high school, you all tossed him out here in the world and said, all right, little nigga, get out here and perform. He's like, perform what? Can't you see I'm cute? Right. They're like, oh, no, we don't pay for cuteness. What? Get out here and do it. Well, there's there's no drug work. Your criminal gangs are all locked up left and right. So he's got to get out here and do ultra risky stuff now. He can't sell a little weed. Now he got to go straight to the hard stuff. Cocaine, crack. Uh, now was a heroin. Got it laced with fentanyl and every damn thing else. You're going to have to go straight to the Colombians. Straight to the Mexicans. Bro, it ain't no safe work out here like that anymore. Every It's, it's nothing but right. heavyweight now. Everything is rough. So as males, right. we understand, dude, if you can't, and that's how you, and you know this, even where you at and whatnot. Bro, I've been through malls all across this country. Black males, walk, young black males walk around in groups with their pants sagging. Hell yeah, he looking for a nigga to take care of him. Can we just I'm say it like it is? see that, but man. Dude, he looking for, let's say like it is, he's looking for a nigga to take care of him. At Lenox Mall, I'm seeing young black males sitting here in Victoria's Secret picking through the pink thing for a thong. Why? Because psychologically, he's looking for a nigga to take care of him. He's like, I can't handle this. So he's resorting to the tactics he's seen his mama use. He's never seen a man show him nothing. And the only males who will show him something is something criminal. And next thing you know, these dudes, and you know this, at your age and my age, brother, we know if... It takes time to learn how to be a good criminal. It takes time to learn how to be a successful criminal. Dude, you ain't getting that time no more. You, you're you not getting the opportunity to go boost 10 or 12 cars and get it down to a science. There's no way you can do it now. You're going to hit one or two of them and that's it. Something's going to happen. So you got grown males out here looking for another man to take care of them. They're looking for another man to perform for them and it's not gonna happen so the females don't have the same burden of performance as we do or should i say they don't think they do they don't think they do because here's the real issue brother and you know this go ahead and let everybody know how old you are i'm 56 years old i'll be 57 so you understand when i say this at your your Older than you're significantly older than I am, but we both know the same thing. A female, yeah. and you missed a out female the one song. never, you the one song. well, I mean, the female never wants to struggle. Oh. I don't care how young or how old she is. A female never switches gears and says, you know what? I Yesterday I wasn't struggling, but today eh, I'm willing to accept more struggling. That's not the way oh, females no. operate. Whether she 25 or 55, no. you ain't had no female at any age approach you with the expectation, with the expectation that getting with you was going to lead to her struggling more and that she's cool with it. No. You're right. So how is Unfortunately, it- unfortunately, I'm sorry. How is how are we going to sit up here and have somebody try to fool us into believing that suddenly they're going to be okay with that? They will never be okay with that. As a and as a woman, because she never wants to struggle, well, guess what, ladies? If you want a man to take care of you at a level where you ain't struggling, you're gonna have to perform. Problem: If you Thank aren't you. groomed in your early years to be a performer and to perform then you're going to be out of the game. The crazy part is most of these chicks today are out of the game before they even start. We just give them their final written notice when they get 35, 40, 45. But the truth of the matter is they already have flunked the test at 25. I'll let you have the last word. B1, you keep it 100. This is the best 
school of hard knock learning for all black people across America. And you push the issue on multiple, multiple issues. And I like how you really broke it down from, like you said, those that was graduating out of high school in the 2000s. And you forgot the one song, Luke Skywalker, Me So Horny. Them days was crazy days. I'm um, oh, doing the butt by EU. B1, bro, keep it 100. Black First Brother. Oh, that was when it started there. In the mid '90s, I mean the late the late '80s, mid '90s. That that was when it was starting. That you saw it beginning then, and it just took off after that. But it only takes off when you have a willing audience, an audience that is desirous to go along and play that game. Let me get called from Erico two two five. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where you calling from? Hey, Jason. This is Mo from um, Louisiana. By way, well, New Orleans by way of Baton Rouge. All right, how are things going for you down there? Uh, it's rough. Um, not rough, but I mean things are slowly back and opening back up. But um, yeah, it looks like a tornado come came through as a hurricane did. But well, it's, you know, it's coming together. I still got kin. Slowly. I still got kin folk from down there and whatnot. And like I say, those things always throw a bunch of rain around and stuff like that when they come through. So. You know, um, y'all keep your head up down there. What's on your mind? Appreciate it. Uh, so I was calling because um, I have a few thoughts of transition. Today I'm 35. Today's my born day. And um, I went and evacuated to Houston for the hurricane. While I was out there, I experienced a different um, interaction with, you know, males. Um I hear you often talk about how, you know, I need to get out of here anyway. You know, it's just nothing in Louisiana, period. And when I went to Houston, I experienced that. Um, I guess my, my question surrounding that is, you know, I I'm, live well here. And when I go to Houston, I just see that the price of living is a lot um, well, it's higher. And I just wanted to kind of, get your advice on how to kind of um, branch off into Houston and, and kind of evaluate or make adjustments as necessary to kind of open myself up more. Okay. I might have the same job. My job uh, is actually in, in here's Texas. All, so. Here's all I want you to do. I want you to email me at handlethebusiness at yahoo.com. Send me an email. Okay. And I, I'm going to schedule a time to speak with you. Okay. I can definitely help you out with that, but send me an email to handle the business at yahoo.com and we'll schedule to speak to you. I want to try to stick, stick on the vein in which we're speaking in here right now, but we can do something a little bit later here. Let me call, get called from Erico 470. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Call from Atlanta. 470. Stop rubbing on yourself with the baby oil. You're on live. Hello, Jason. Can you hear me? This is Joe calling from Atlanta. Joe from Atlanta, what's on your mind? Hey, man, I'm sorry to interrupt the show like that, but uh, no, I was agree with your point wholeheartedly. And uh, I'm 38 years old, a uh, professional here in Atlanta, make roughly about 200 grand. And uh, what I'll say is that, um, you know, back in the day, you know, when I was graduating college and, you know, in my 20s, um, a lot of the girls, you know, graduated from Stallman and Clark. You know, the pretty girls, they were all, you know, chasing the athletes, all with the Hawks players, all with the Falcons players. They didn't have time for, you know, guys like me who were, you know, working, you know, even though I was making good money, they had no time for us. But lo and behold, I've ran into some of them. They're 34, 35, 36, 37 now. Oh, they got all day. They're acting us out on dates now. It's pathetic. <laughs> so uh, I just wanted to uh, piggyback off your point that uh, I try to tell a lot of girls now in their 20s, I'm like, look, you're wasting your best years out here trying to have hot girls, summer to send a third, these same guys that are trying to date you now and court you now and in law school or whatever they're doing, they ain't going to be checking for you in the 30s. I said, I experienced it myself. Well, it used and, to be uh, they were know, told this. There's some salvation I mean, brother, look, black women, when, I was I in, when I was in elementary school, you used to be told that. You know, the grandmothers and even the mothers back then, the grandmothers definitely – would sit there and smack the girls in the back of the head. It's, oh, we ain't going for swag and cute and whatnot. The, they understood the fellow who's the nerd in the class, that's the one going to produce. See, them old women back then understood. Take a look at him. He can sit at his desk. 
He's starting to show mature characteristics. Immaturity is jumping exactly. around and whatnot. She's looking, uh, she's scouting out the one who's sitting at his desk. He's driven. He's focused. He performs at a high level. He, he's getting straight A's, so he's showing at an early level that he's taking on more mature traits. He doesn't really want to swing from the jungle gym and whatnot. He wants to sit down and do his work. Well, which one of these boys, when he gets older, is going to most be able to produce in an employment environment, in a self-employment environment, where you're not being given points for being cute and going to recess? Which one of them is most showing the attributes and characteristics necessary to perform work you can see those signs early and so if your mama straight you're like hey that's the one you need to talk to he's the one showing that he will transition from grade school to graduate school to corporate environment to self-employed he's the kid who understands the x's and o's and the letters he's the one who will most be able to gravitate and uh, um, graft on to putting together a credit score he will do, he will sacrifice. He will delay gratification. He can make a long-term plan and stick with it. This other little jackalope ass nigga sitting over here jumping around with the Air Jordans on and whatnot and singing rap lyrics. He's going to be chasing a record deal to the day he dies. I ain't trying to get you with that. We can, we, it's not rocket science, brother. We can see the characteristics early on. The real question is, were you raised by a mother? This is on the mothers, not the fathers. Were you raised by a mother? If you're a female, did you have a mother whose feminine example to you was focusing on a man who was built? Or were you raised by a mother who was attempting to recapture her late teens and early 20s and never grew the hell up? I'll let you have the last word. I'll leave it on this, Jason. I I actually went out on Saturday night in Atlanta. I was a buckhead. And I actually ran into a young lady, 21 years old, and she worked at Hooters. Then we just got into a conversation. I was just I'm 23 years old, and uh, she didn't get it. And actually, what I said to her brought her to tears. And I said, "Look, you got to understand something." I said there was a survey done. I said aesthetically, men, no, no matter what age, 15 to 60, find women most attractive between 18 to 24. I said, so "Let me tell you something. You're 23 now. You'll be 24 in a couple of in six months. You're at the end of your peak." I said, "The girl who's 18 right now." Who's gonna be walking in a little hot, tight body, all this kind of thing? In three years, 18, she'll be in this club with us. Guess what? Then you're 27. Now you're one of the older chicks. I said, I'm 38. I look at I look at 27 year old chicks as older. I said, that's what you're competing with. I said, you're hot now. I said, women have a short window. And when I really broke it down to her, uh, Jason, li- literally, she started tearing up and uh, really understood the severity of the situation. So I hope. That if there are any women out there that uh, listening right now that they can really understand, like, look, you guys have a peak, and it ain't peak when you're 35 like a man or 45 as a, like a man. It's when you're 25. So uh, I'll leave you there, there, Jason. Keep doing great work, my man. Thank you very much for giving us a call here tonight. Let me get a caller from area code 614. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? And caller from 614 has been abducted. Caller from area code 626, you're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Greetings, other brother. This is L out of L.A. L out of L.A., what's on your mind? The fact that uh, we as black males are punished across the board. We speak to a, a sister. We try to holler at her, whatever the case may be. And flex our extensive vernacular. She call us weird. She say something wrong with us. You a geek, something wrong with us. And then the guys follow suit. So we are ostracized unnecessarily. Well, yeah, I gotta I about. gotta tell you, brother, it, it what you are correct in that in a lot of regard, but I gotta tell you from the manhood perspective here, from the male perspective. Women are going to, in the adult world, females are going to respond to, they're going to respond to leverage. Females are not going to respond to, to lack of leverage. So whether your vocabulary, and take it from me, I'm a guy with, I think I can be described as having a rather expansive vocabulary. Feet, and I've been to Los Angeles and pulled. So I, 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 that, that's, that's not foreign territory to me. But females are going to respond to leverage 
and they will respond more positively to the leverage that you have. So vocabulary, you're, you're that could be an issue. But it's just if a fellas sign. are I'm lacking, just as a sign of if fellas are lacking, that's going to be an issue. Oh, well, at a young age, if fellas are I mean, even at a young age, but if fellas are lacking, what what tends to happen, and the the thing is with your nerds and your geeks at a young age, the issue with them, and I know I was one, is they tend to lack confidence. So they are not socially outgoing. The females, because the requirements of them are different, they can be social butterflies at a young age. But fellas are not judged the same way. So we don't get, when a fella is a young nerd, he's focusing on accumulating intellectual assets. And the trade-off for that is he becomes very good at acquiring information and processing it. But he's probably going to yeah. suffer at dealing with people interpersonally as a result. That's the bad news. The good news is human beings are social creatures. Nine chances out of ten, he's going to pick up socializing later. So that's not the real issue. So a person can pick up socializing later in life after he's gotten intellectual assets. Can you pick up the intellectual assets later in life if you focused on socializing assets earlier in your formative years i submit to you it will be nowhere near as easy to wake up at 25 trying to gain a powerful vocabulary a powerful aptitude mechanical skills as opposed to interpersonal social skills knowledge the better you are in the profession usually the less interacting with people you got to do you know, unless you're running a business, it certainly helps to be able to. But giving giving I don't boys mind not talking to people. Well, yeah, I mean, but you can get you can gain those skills later. I mean, the real thing is, social skills certainly help your income. Absolutely, it, it, it does. There's no doubt about that. But yeah. having abilities, technical skills, having um, financial skills, having intellectual skills are a po- that's an offset. That's not even just a compensation. That's an offset. It's like, okay, he doesn't talk much, but he can produce by himself. And let's be very, very clear, brother. You understand this. Females and men, by the way. Like, for example, you and me, if I got a mechanic, a accountant, a doctor, whatever, I don't need him to be doing a bunch of talking. I really don't. I don't need him to be doing a bunch of jaw jacking. With a female, okay, she got to talk. Dude, that's not what I got you for. As a man, them the rules we living by. So as a, for a young fella, yeah, he might be a little socially awkward, but as long as he's building that, I can teach him to socialize later. He'll pick that up later. But if I don't show him how to handle himself mechanically, intellectually, academically, you know, um, dealing with the social, uh, dealing with, um, Being able to take the Earth's resources and use them and getting him used to environments where that's the level of interaction you have. If I can't get him to figure that out by the age of 22, 25, you've got a broken man. You had a a deficient child and now you've got a broken man. This is true. Thank you very much for giving us a call here tonight. You know, it's it's one of those things. If if he's a broken man, that's going to be hell to deal with. Let's be very, very clear. Everything I do here now, what I've been doing for over a decade now, is dealing with broken men. Skill sets they were not given as children. A lot of them were taught, well, here's how you socialize and here's how you don't be a square. Life is not a damn sock hop or a high school prom. Life is not the Sadie Hawkins dance. You don't get any benefits for swag in the adult world. I have talked to many a banker, many a lawyer, a few judges. Never once got judged on my attire. I have bought entire vehicles, real estate property, never showed my face. Showed my credit score and showed a credit report, never showed my face. In some cases, had to show proof of assets. A proof of funds in the bank, but was never required to show my swag, my dress code, or my face. I think I'm doing all right. And if you don't, if you have not liked this and shared this, what the hell are you doing? 
If they tell you that we can't get thousands of people to listen, if they tell you you got to wait till the middle of the night when everybody, quote, gets home and that you can't have a program that can run in the middle of the day and still get thousands of people. Take a look at this right now. Thousands of people during the middle of the day. You got folks out there with four times the number of subscribers and followers we got here and don't have one fourth of the people who are listening to us live right now. So people understand when they got the real. Call from area code 773. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello, Jason. This is Max from uh, Chicago. How are you doing? Max from Chicago. What's on your mind? Yes, sir. Uh, I've been listening to you ever since March 2000. I just want to say you have a great program. Uh, I mean, a, a great broadcast. And I want to thank you for all the stuff you did. I wish that I would have learned about you much sooner. Uh, I know this is going to be off topic. But I do want to get gamed up by you. I was wondering by any chance, do you have a Wednesday program with your uh, get your weight up? Um, I might. It just depends. I plan on doing something else this week. So be looking for that. Okay. But but if I do, it'll be on Patreon. So if you're not a member of my Patreon, okay. yeah. I got to say, for everybody who wants to talk to me one-on-one and whatnot, my time is limited over here, obviously. That's what I have Patreon for. Oh. Is so, I, so that whittles it down. So the folk who really want to speak to me and whatnot, I mean, I can't make it any easier than that. Sign up for the Patreon over there. You want to talk to me? All you got to do is call up. I take every single phone call that I get. Because sometimes here or my other program, it, when I'm ready to go, I'm ready to go. My patron, I will answer okay. every single phone call that comes in. I don't care if I'm there for five hours. So no, that, that's all I'm I can already, give you. Uh, I already signed up. I already signed up to your Patreon. I want to okay. say about two or three months ago. Okay, well, I've be, been listening to that ever since. So be yeah. looking, be looking for a program this week. Then I plan on doing one this week. Okay, thank you, sir. I appreciate your time. And also, thank you very much for giving us a call tonight. Let me get caller area code eight six two. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, hey, what's going on, Jason? My name is Joseph from Newark, New Jersey. Joseph from Newark, what's on your mind? Hey, man, um, I've been a long-time subscriber, long-time listener. Um, I just chimed into your program today, man, because I'm at work and I'm bored at work. But I, I actually agree with 100% of what you're saying um, because uh, what you're talking about kind of falls into the category of throughout my whole life. You know, um, especially deal with dealing with females, and typically it, it comes from a place of uh, of uh, antagonism. You know, they say that you're, um, <clears throat> you know, they even say that you. Well, I grew up in the '80s, so in the '90s, so it was like that whole uh, light skin, dark skin thing. I'm a dark skin man, you know, so I wasn't attract attracted to females back then. Uh, you know, on top of that, I'm sort of like a nerd or whatever. You know, like a like an introvert, so I didn't have no swag, so I was considered a cornball. You know, now that I'm older, I'm kind of like, and I'm older now. I'm 37 years old. I don't have no kids, and the same girls that I grew up with, same girls that came from around the way in the neighborhood, they talk about they they insinuate that I'm gay or something because I don't have any kids. Well, you, you, you got to no, you, you got to filter out the cornball chicks, dude. That's another thing. Dudes got to quit, you know. Worrying about the opinions of, of, of inconsequential individuals. Any female sitting up here saying right. that and whatnot. And I, I'm just going to say it to you straight like it is, bro. Most mm-hmm. of the females out here today are really not worth talking to. And what tends to happen is you are, your nine chances out of 10 going to be a, going to approach or encounter, should I say, one who is just not up to code. I mean, that is what it is. I mean, that is what it is. I don't care what she does for a living. You to- Mentally and emotionally, she's probably yeah. going to be very immature in that regard. So when they talk to you like that, just understand, oh, you one of them, she ain't, she ain't built to run. It's, it's really not even worth a further discussion at that point. Do you want someone with that complete deficiency in development raising your kids? Hell, do you want them to have proximity to your wallet? No, you don't. So like I say, if you want to sit here and use them you know, for extracurricular activities, knock yourself out. But don't, and when they say something like that, it's like, okay, I cannot take you seriously because you obviously have never been raised by a man. Definitely never been raised by one who could produce. In her mind, a man is somebody wearing a wife beater 
and sagging his pants. By the way, oh, the irony of accusing folks to be gay. So in her mind, that's what it is. So you have someone who doesn't have a frame of reference. You have someone who doesn't have a frame of reference. It's not a functional frame of reference. It's an aesthetic frame of reference informed by, well, the fact they were plugged in front of a television and a cell phone. And so they let TV tell them what, quote, unquote, a man is. They don't have a functional definition. What does a man do? So in her mind, it's like, okay, well, if it wasn't something I saw in a Beyonce or Missy Elliott video, that doesn't count. When you're dealing with somebody that deficient, in my mind, and I'm just going to be straight with you, you can do whatever you want to do from there. I don't believe such a female is it is worthy of a relationship. Most she, of them, she's worthy yeah, to be stalled out. Either. But most of these girls, or most of these women, don't even want relationships. They basically want the same thing that men are wanting. That's the reason why you have untrue. All these, you know, like these shaming tactics, and you got stuff like slut walk and everything. These girls want of uh, the right and the ability to be sluts. But when somebody calls them out for their bullshit, they'll tell them they'll say and they'll you know get on the on on the soapbox and talk about misogyny and. And uh, hating, you know, it's funny, yo. Black women always say that somebody's hating on them when they tell them the truth about them. When they help, when they, when the mirror got to be held up to their face, it's hate. Well, like, let me let me tell most, you something got here. The most haters in the world. Let me tell you something here, brother. <laughs> I want you to understand something. Don't. I, I know what you were saying is accurate at a certain point, and a certain right. in a certain uh, tertiary point. What you're saying is accurate. Right. But let's be very, very clear about something here. All females are looking for a relationship. All. A L L 100%. Zero exceptions. She is either a female who has accepted it or a female who is in denial of it and fighting it. But the bottom line is let's be very, very clear. Females by nature, by uh-huh. biology, biologically, brother, she's literally got 160 million years of evolution telling her that her job is to inseminate herself so that she can give birth to the next generation. Even if she doesn't have ovaries, even if she doesn't have reproductive organs, brother, I mean, this is biology. It's, it's inscribed and engraved on her DNA. She doesn't have a choice in the matter. This is why swinging butt cheeks is so essential. Swinging butt cheeks is, hey... I'm available. Why is it you think that's the very first thing they go to and whatnot to get your attention? This is biology talking, so let's be very, very clear. A, there is no value in cranking out a baby. This is why males like yourself find this to be very frustrating and whatnot, and it's understandable. But the reality is there is no value in getting pregnant by a dude. If the pregnancy is not tied, if the pregnancy is not directly coupled to protection and provision, having a baby by a bum is worthless, which is why females immediately emasculate a male and attempt to publicly humiliate him if he if he is not able to provide. It's not worth it to just have your baby. So she might have been not taught, not trained and might have fallen for, you know, her physical impulses and gotten pregnant because nobody explained to her just because a guy is cute. You cannot make the 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 um, the you can't have the halo effect. And make the assumption that just because a guy is cute that he possesses all... He's physically attractive, so he possesses all of these other attractive characteristics as well. No, that's not the way it works. So if she got right, that's, fooled that's, and got um, made an idiot of the first time, she's going to eventually learn to compensate. And what's she immediately going to do? Okay, looks need to be coupled to resources. Would have been a whole lot smarter and better if she had done it the first time. But she's eventually going to get there. So understand, every female wants a relationship. The real question is, will she wisen up and realize this early? Or will she take a lot of damn lumps and figure it out later? Most of them never, most of them never get it, Jay. And that's, and that's the problem. Why That's the reason why I'm probably, I'm still single, man, because I'm not willing just to, you know, to have a woman just look at me as, as a, as a wallet with legs. You know what I'm saying? I have to let them know, like, yo, straight up, yo, you got to earn your way into that position. You can't just, you know, come out, you come to me, shake a little ass, throw me some pussy and then tell me that I got to pay half your rent next week. It's like, nah, 
You know what I'm saying? And I think that's the reason why OnlyFans are so popping right now because just like I said, these girls need an outlet. You know what I'm saying? Like most people, most people who are on social media don't really need to be on social media, but it gives a it gives a voice to the voiceless. You know what I'm saying? And they call empowerment. They say it's funny because it's a dichotomy between uh, victimhood and empowerment. You got all these women out here saying that they're victims and they need somebody to take care of them and they don't have no rights, blah, blah, blah. And then they'll say in the next breath that I'm empowered, independent. I don't need a man, you know. And what you were talking about with the nature, you know, that's basically the, um, that's a, like the difference between the, like nature and um, and the social construct. You know what I'm saying? Like when you were talking about like how women have to use their assets in order to attract men. Well, they used to get they taught relate. that. That used to be That's something true. that they were taught. The it used to be something they were instructed about. Now they're not instructed anymore or they get their education from the internet and television, which is the absolute worst place you can possibly get it because you're being given a bunch of images and a bunch of TV shows. You're being flooded with a bunch of images and information with no context. And with a total lack of context, mm -hmm. it only turns out bad. Thank you very much for giving us a call. Let me get a call from area code 630. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, Jason. This is Nick calling from uh, Chicago by way of Houston. Nick from Chicago. What's on your mind? Yeah. Um, I wanted to add in on here. It's a lot of like the, the women that are approaching 40 or over 40. I used to get uh, approached by them being younger. I'm still far away from that age, but. Uh, I think I related to one of your uh, broadcasts where you were talking about it was an achievement for a young man to uh, get an older woman. But then after a while, it just became old because it's like we literally can't do anything with them. And so I'm looking at them. Any woman to me over 26, 25, uh, I'm regarding her as old because it's just like the the looks seem to have faded very quickly. And, That's not uh, the barometer. I mean, can we be honest, though? Uh, I'm glad as males, see, here's the real thing. As males, we actually create forums where we can at least talk about these things, except the black manosphere. Uh, them guys don't do anything over there and talk. Uh, they don't talk to each other at all. But we can at least talk to each, at least in places like this, you'll to get to talk to other guys, and we can compare notes on things. And I really want to flesh out what you just said there, is that at 25, the looks start to fade. Well, yeah, I mean, that that can be true, but that's not the real problem. The real problem mm. is it's multidimensional. What if she's a 27-year-old who looks like she's 21? And there are some, not most, but there are some out there. The real thing is, what are you, quote, too old for? Now, there's the real question. Not are you, quote, too old, but when we say that you are too old, exactly what is it that you're too old for? Well, you are too old when it comes to attitude. If a chick has been over, for example, let's just say a chick from the, from the ages of 15 to 25, she's been overweight the whole time. Her mama was one of these sloppy hoes who got a buggy basket full of Cheetos and, um, jello chocolate pudding at the store she doesn't have anything that wasn't microwaved so from the ages of 15 to 25 she's been size 16 or more by the it doesn't mm. matter when you meet her if you meet her at 24 she is too old to correct that because she's been take a look at how long she's been living her life that way take a look at the attitude you are too old to be a prime candidate because of your weight. And you're only 24. In some cases, 22 or 21. Your attitude. You were raised by a sassy-ass mama. You slick at the mouth at 20 years old. You're too old for me to be able to do nothing with. I would have to sit up here and, and, and wrinkle you out for the next seven, eight years. I ain't got that kind of time. Not enough sexy in the world for that. Debt. 22 years old with a $80,000 in debt. Well, I went to college when I was 18. 22 years old sitting on $80,000 in debt and looking at me like I'm black Santa Claus. What am I supposed to do with that? Or one of the biggest ones we run into here, you're 23 years old and you've got the thousand niggas stare 
thousand nigga yard stare because of all the dudes you didn't slept with dudes two dozen dudes by the time you're 22 years old you're too old i can't run the clock backwards and correct that you're already too old regardless of how you look regardless of your physical appearance at this point you're too old what am i supposed to do with a 23 year old with, with, with a 20 plus body count. What am I supposed to do with a 22 year old size 18? What am I supposed to do with a 21 year old sassy mouth heft? What am I supposed to do with that? 22 years old with 80 G's in debt or on your way. What am I supposed to do with you? Cause by the time I get that straightened out, if I so choose to your mission, if you choose to accept it, I won't. But if your mission, if you choose to accept it, right. by the time I get you straightened out, half of you going to be 27, 28, 30? Do you realize how much of an investment I would have to make to do that? So while you are correct, yeah, the, the looks, technically speaking, it's not going to get any better after she's 25. It's, it's not going to get better. You never saw a chick who was better looking, you know, with no makeup, no accessories, at 27 than she was at 24. It just doesn't happen. It's not possible. But by the same token, she can already be a done. Uh, so I, that's what you mean about looks. Yeah, she's not going to get any better after 25. But bro, as far as being too old, if you're a size 18, you're probably too old by the time you're 22. It, you're, it's probably too, you're probably you too the old nail right on the head. then. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. It's uh, I I uh, look to somebody that was uh, 22, and I gave her a little bit more tolerance with her attitude issues than I did with somebody that was 27. 27 immediately cut her off, and, and as you were saying that, I thought back. I'm like, yeah, I gave uh, somebody that was 22 a year, but somebody that was 27 probably, I think, twice. It took it across me, and then I worked on the 22-year-old, but... Yeah, 27 immediate cutoff. Well, I mean, definitely in this modern era, I can understand why guys would say that because it's the coachability factor that's really the issue. When a female is in her early 20s, that's really the last train leaving to if she is coachable and moldable. But if she's been laid on by a bunch of dudes it's going to be hard for you to mold her to be what's appropriate for you. She's already got all these fingerprints on her and all these indentures, all of these. Ha it's like a sculptor who started on a sculpture and then halfway through it or a quarter way through it stopped. And now you got to deal with rectifying what he did and then correct it and put on some plaster. And can we fill this out? And you know, it's, 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 it becomes a situation where you have to ask yourself, okay, how much am I willing to invest in this? If a female is 27 and set in her ways, and now you don't have a couple of things you need to tweak, you're going to have to have whole parts you got to remove. The whole damn engine and transmission got to come out. And she's only 27. It's like, you really have to ask yourself, damn. Now, if she's 37, forget about it. If, if a chick is 37, <laughs> no. forget about it, man. It, there's nothing you can do with a damn 37-year-old. If she's a disciplinary problem at 37, nigga, you better be cool with whatever level of discomfort she's giving you because what you buy in is what you got. You are not going to be able to mold a 37-year-old. You're not. You're not going to be able to resurface the paint job on a 39 year old. You're not going to be able to turn, you know, a, a Ford Focus into a Ford Focus GT on a 35 year old. What you bought is what you got. If it's a Kia Rio, it's a Kia Rio. Uh, you better be happy with it. Don't tell yourself, I'm going to turn this Kia Rio into a Kia Stinger. It's not happening. And too often, Dudes get tired, they get worn down, they, you know, she's got two of the five things you need, let's see if we can work, make it work, that ain't the way men's supposed to be, that's the way women are supposed to be, a woman is supposed to be like, okay, let me wait for him to get things together, well, as a man, it's, you don't have that option, not when she gets to a certain point, 
Which, and that's why a lot of dudes now, and as black men in particular, as black males, we've never had tolerance for pedophiles. We're the only community that's never had a tolerance for that. We're the only community where a pedophile gets a tire, a burning tire around his neck. We're the only ones who can say that. And not in prison either. You can get the business right out here on the street. You really can. And ain't nobody going to say a damn thing. But it's also created a situation where you're dealing with two things. Number one, as men, we've never really wanted to look for really young chicks like that. And at the same time, inversely, you also have a situation where the females tend to use that against you. And then say, oh, well, you need to have somebody your age. Well, that used to be, you know the prime option until you contaminated and ruined all of them who are our age. So that used to be an option before you did that. But you got a bunch of 40 year old chicks now who are shaking their asses to juvenile and Lil John and the East side boys and Beyonce and Missy Elliott. And you're dealing with all the requisite wreckage thereof. And now they're in their forties and fifties and you're telling us, okay. And from the old Chris rock joke, choose a wife out of this bunch. It's like, no. Now, I can say that, but by the same token, most of these fellas in their 30s and 40s are not leadership material yet at this point to be able to deal with a chick who is moldable because you ain't ready to mold nothing. So if it were my daughter and she were 22 years old, you know, I got to check the fellas pedigree and check the paperwork. Because most of these fellas out here in their 30s and 40s, he's not suited to mold her into anything worth having. You want a fellow who's going to take your daughter and take over where you left off at and mold her into a better woman. But most of these dudes got a bunch of complaints. But do they really have the ability and the expertise to take a female and mold her into a better woman than he found her? Most of them are. They got a bunch of complaints about what's out here. So even if you dropped a 22-year-old on the average fella in his 30s, or most of them even in their 40s, does he really even know what to do with her? I don't know. I'll let you have the last word. Yeah, uh, like I said, you hit the nail uh, on the head, and you've been 100% correct. You got me to think about uh, rethink that maybe it's not a hundred percent the looks, but it's probably the, it's the entire package that comes with that. And the, I guess the undertones of what I would have to put in the effort I got to put in compared to where she is. And I guess that's summed up to coachability and some other factors, but thank you. Thank you very much for giving us a call today. Please do give us a call again. Let me get caller from area code two Oh three. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, Jason. It's uh, Sean from uh, Connecticut. Okay, Sean from where in Connecticut? Uh, Bridgeport. All right, Sean from Bridgeport. What's on your mind? Yeah, I just want to, to uh, just point out with, with the topic that's going on right now. I, um, you know, it's like when I'm observing certain females, like I had an ex. She's, uh, she just recently turned 40, and she added me on Facebook. And, uh, she, you know, I just came back from my honeymoon. I just got married. I had a son. And she seems to be, like, trying to contact me. And as I'm looking at her Facebook feed, it's just nothing but pictures of her and a dog, uh, plants and stuff like that. And I feel like she's, like, psychologically breaking down. Um, but it seems like her mother keeps encouraging her in the comments section, always encouraging her and saying everything's okay. You know, I kind of want you to tell me a little bit about what's going on in the mindset of, of these females once they hit that wall and they well, hit I've the explained that before. Find a partner. I've explained that before. Is that in this generation of females, the mothers, these thirty-five-year-old grandmothers of a decade ago, we talk about the class of two thousand, all them hoes from the class of two thousand mm-hmm. who are now the thirty-five-year-old grandmothers or the forty-year-old grandmothers of today. 
they they have groomed their daughters to be their companions. You see, a female, like I said, a female is always looking for a relationship. I told this to the previous caller, but here's the real issue. If a female cannot get a relationship with a man, she will accept a relationship with a son, a daughter, a dog, a houseplant, a job. If she is denied that genuine masculine relationship with a man as protector and provider, she will compensate in a sick manner. And what the chief thing that they're doing today is they're grooming their daughters to be their lifelong companions. So they groom their daughters to be socially inept, overweight, obese, bad attitude. You don't need no man. You just need mama. That what makes you a good... Take, Check me on this if I'm wrong, brother. Stop me if this sounds familiar. What is it that defines a good son? How he treats his mama. Well, what is it that defines a good daughter? How he treats his mama. Okay, well, what is it that defines a good employee? How he treats his mama. So their answer to everything will be how they treat their mama. Notice they didn't say how they treat their parents. They don't say that. The fellas in the NBA, looking at you, uh, Durant. How you treat your mama. Nobody talking about this how you treat your parents. It's how you treat your mama. Well, guess what? That applies to the daughters also. That the most important thing she will do in this world is how she treats her mom. So if it's a choice between taking care of her husband and taking care of her mother, if mom puts the pressure on her, who ends up winning? Oh, well, I got to go take care of my mama. Man, man, man. Have, you're from Connecticut, but it's big in the South, and I'm sure it happens up there as well. They're off to go, t- go see about mom. As opposed to, well, mom, I will see about you to the extent that I can. I am no longer a, I am a member of your family, but I am no longer a member of your household. I have my own now. And because I have my own household, my interactions with you will be different. This man I'm with, he is the priority now. That doesn't mean I'm going to leave you out here bad necessarily, but I am not going to sit up here and refuse to move out of the state I'm in, refuse to move out of the city I'm in so that I can keep proximity to you in case you need some help because for the last 40 years, you didn't do what I did. I went and got a man to couple with. You either didn't get one or when you were with my dad, you didn't think he was worth keeping. So now you got to hold that. I love your mama, but you got to hold it. Instead, what they do is they groom their daughters to give up their futures. Why do you think it is they tell your daughters, you got to go get you a good job? Okay, but notice, I'm I'm trying to draw some parallels here and some connections. I'm trying to connect the dots so you all see. What do they do with their daughters? You got to go get a good job. So you can, quote, take care of yourself. Bullcrap. She means she can come back and go take care of you. To the sons, if he has a chance to go to the pros straight out of high school, you go ahead and do that. Get out here and start working. Okay, you and I understand this males for time immemorial. The world has always pushed us out there to go get ourselves working as quickly as possible. Working on the farm, working in the plants, child laborers, shoeshine boys, etc. That's always been a burden in the expectation of us. As soon as you can start producing financially, you go do it. Why? So you can take the place of the father who is not there. So they put that burden on both the sons and the daughters. So now you have a situation, and brother, you've seen this. We've seen this everywhere. If you go to uh, Papa Do's, if you go to Cheesecake Factory, Olive Garden, the grocery store, everybody's seeing it now, especially with this damn bonnet mess. you see seeing three generations of fat, out of shape, ridiculous ass looking hoes look like they just rolled out of bed. The grandmama, the mama, and the daughter. Usually carrying a little bastard on the arms. No man anywhere in sight. Gynocentrism is a complete failure. But just understand, if she is unable to get a husband or unwilling, she will groom her daughter to become her lifelong companion. And at least she should be dealing with... And by the way, the chicks who try to shame you for dating younger and whatnot... These old hoes should be dealing with chicks their age. They can't even stand each other. 
They don't even have the ability to make a relationship with another woman her age. So it used to be that the little old ladies at the church used to be talking to each other. They don't even do that now. It's just them and their daughters. That's it. That's it. So what you just saw, I've been talking about this now for months and months. They groomed their daughters to be their lifelong companions. And now the daughters are getting older and older and becoming their mother's companions into their middle ages and into their senior citizen years. So mama was relieved of the burden of ever actually having to pay for her sins and get a man. She now was able to influence her daughter to give up her life and become mama's lifelong companion. Damn, that's diabolical. That's cold-blooded, man, because that's exactly what I'm seeing. I've seen her take down some posts where it seems like she just has mental breakdowns, and now it seems like the mother just keeps posting comments of encouragement, no matter how ridiculous some of the stuff that she posted. She posts ridiculous stuff about dogs, houseplants, and she's following me on Facebook, so she sees me and my wife and my, my children, and she, uh, you know, it just seems like, uh, I, I, it, it feels like she's torturing herself. Why is she even wanting to see what's going on in my life if she doesn't have that in her life and her mother's there sabotaging her, like you said? And uh, she, te she, she actually has a really incredible job at Harvard, and um, I'm sure she makes, you know, does well for herself, but she just seems, she's just such a, when I used to date her, she was such a disciplinary issue that I could just never get, you know, you know, seal the deal with her. Well, first of all, people are always going to gravitate to what they want. So it doesn't matter if they're not eligible for it. If they know what they want, they're going to gravitate to that, period, in the discussion. But also, because tormenting themselves is, is enjoyable. I mean, I should say enjoyable necessarily, but it's, it, that's a sign of emotional uh, unrest, Emotional distress, emotional upheaval, tattoos, piercings, uh, body markings, cutting yourself, desecration, emotional impact. You start to see those things on a regular basis. And the reason that you start to see that is because you're dealing with an individual that harming themselves, hurting themselves, causing discomfort. It's the only thing that's real. It's the only thing that feels real. It's the only thing that, you know, registers to them as real. That's why they do that. So it becomes a very desirable thing. They just be very desirous because it becomes real. So just understand the proximity of that. You're like, well, shouldn't that be uncomfortable? Yeah, it probably is. And it's probably the most real thing she's felt in a while. Thank you very much for giving us a call. Let me get a call from area code 678. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? What's going on, man? It's Dino from Atlanta, Georgia. Okay, take your phone off the speaker. I'll give you three seconds. Oh, second. Folks, do not Hello? call up with your phones on speaker. Can you hear me now? What is your name? Where are you calling from? My, good. My bad, brother. Uh, Dino from Atlanta, Georgia. Dino from Atlanta. What's on your mind? Yeah, man. So uh, pertaining to this conversation, you know, what I've noticed is that there are I hate to just judge and just lump all the women into certain things. Like I heard a brother earlier who said over 22 or something like that, or over 26 or something like that is old. And I mean, have you spoken to some of these young women that are under 30? Yes, sir. I host a program. Well, I'm just saying like the, I mean, like in an intimate setting or like trying to get to know them, a lot of these women, they just, they just have, there's nothing going on upstairs. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, I know how they have this situation where they use certain men just for sexual purposes and then certain men for everything else. It's, it's almost the same way with women. Like, with older women, you could talk to them. Sometimes you can talk to them and you can get something out of them tangible, like mentally upstairs or spiritually or whatever, because they've gone through it and they've worked through it. Whereas with these young girls, they be, you know, in Atlanta, it's a lot of beautiful women out here. But man, like the level of just stupidity running around here is ridiculous. Well, you know um, I, mean? I will dangerous. say, I will say Atlanta, unfortunately, when it comes to femininity and sexuality, Atlanta is damn me got Sodom and Gomorrah. And, but it tends to be a mixed bag. I mean, I, I will be totally honest with you. It tends to be a mixed bag. Um, you're going to either find some chicks. Usually you're going to find some chicks who are really, 
when you're raised in such a contaminated, you know, corrupted culture, it's going to be hard to bypass that. But by the same token, I mean, there are some. It's certainly not a wealth of them. Absolutely not. As far as having nothing going on upstairs, brother, I can show you plenty of 30-year-olds and 40-year-olds and, at my age, 50-year-olds with nothing going on up there. It's not like that's the exception. That, that, it's not like that's the exception. Bro, I can show you plenty of chicks out here, right. 42, shaking their butt cheeks, still dancing to Juvenile. I mean, it is, and they're not ch- dancing to Meg Thee Stallion, they're dancing to Drake or anybody else you want to throw out there and whatnot. I mean, they're, they're out here doing it just like the young girls are, which is the problem that middle-aged men have is that, damn, these chicks ain't never grew up 20 years later, and they still haven't grown up. So I would tell you they have a lot more in common with the 21-year-olds than you think, except one thing. Here's the real issue. If I got a choice between an immature 21-year-old and an immature 41-year-old, I'm going to choose the immature 21-year-old all the time if I'm so inclined to do so. Um, I'm going to choose the 21, in, immature 21-year-old because, number one, she ain't set in her ways. Well, number one, I expect it from her because she's still developing. She's not set in her ways. Number two, she is most likely still coachable. She doesn't have all the cuts and dings and bashes, usually, and experiences that would permanently damage her. And number three, she's now at the stage where she's at a crossroads as opposed to a chick who's 35 or 40 and she passed the crossroads 50 miles back there. So at this point, it really wouldn't do you. You can't re-educate her about the crossroads because she's already made her choices. She's already years and years down the line and she's more interested in justifying all the bad choices she made than abandoning the bad choices if she has that option. Because once again, brother, a 21-year-old, she might have the same disciplinary problem as the 41-year-old. Yeah, but she ain't went off and got a tattoo sleeve yet. She ain't went off and got three kids. Yet. <laughs> she hasn't got, gone off and gotten eighty thousand dollars in debt yet. She hasn't gone off and slept with. She slept with six guys. She ain't slept with sixty guys yet. She she hasn't. Well, well, she's been to well, Atlanta. Well, uh, okay, I hate I, to you. so I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm I'm just saying at this point here, you at least have that option. You're not going to have that with a 41 year old. You can have a 21 year old chick in Atlanta and she's been to Atlanta, but she hasn't really seen things. So you have the ability to indoctrinate her and teach her and take her to places. She hasn't been as you can get her, her first coach bag, her first Michael Kors. You can introduce her to that life. As opposed to dealing with a 35-year-old who, yes, yeah, she's smarter, she's more encultured, but she ain't grateful for it. She should be grateful that you're talking to her, and she ain't grateful because all, all you got me was a coach bag. Nigga, I can get myself. You could have got, all you got me was a Fendi. I mean, like I say, you're going to have to make a choice here. I didn't say it's going to be easy, but we're going to have to be practical. Choose which one you're willing to do. Pick a bird. I respect that. Appreciate it, brother. Thank you very much for giving us a call. I mean, this is not a fantasy scenario by any stretch of the imagination. Pick your burden. Pick your poison. You're going to have to pick something up heavy either way. So what you really have to decide is which burden is it that you're ready to deal with. Caller from area code 403. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? My name is Abraham Jason Black. Thanks, you for picking up my calls and calling out of Canada. Okay. And one Abram, of the things that I wanted to prove. Abram out of Canada. Where at in Canada are you calling from? Calgary, Alberta. All right. Calling from Calgary, Alberta. What's on your mind? What's on my mind is that one of the things that I learned from you is that I go back to when you talked about Munch branching. I'm dealing with a chick that I love her enough. We have a family. We have a child. But I can't escape myself out because the way it, or the behavior of female nowadays, I don't know if I should just cop out and then just live my life. That's the way I'm comfortable. I'm a breadwinner, did my dues, pay my bills, take care of the kids, and it's just behavior just continue. Well, I mean, the first thing I would ask you here is how old are you? I'm 42. Okay, you're 42 years old. Let me ask you a question here. You're 42 year old, years old. You're in Calgary, Alberta. Are your folks originally from Calgary or are they immigrants from somewhere else? I'm African. I'm from South Sudan. Okay. I don't know if you know that. Yeah, okay. 
It's um, a small country. It just got burst. Yes, sir. We, Eleven we, years ago. Yes, sir. We know about the Sudan. We also know that too many of them try to identify as Muslim and as Arabs instead of Africans. So I'm familiar with it here. Here's my thing, though, brother. Okay, you're 42 years old. You're in Calgary, Alberta, and you say you have a woman and a child. Yes. Okay, and you are trying to decide whether or not you should stick it out or whether you should start over or something. Yes, and okay. I'm scared to start it over because you I can't should deal be. with these new chicks. Canada has some of the most up. I mean, now, are you married to this woman? No, I'm not married to her. Okay. She's from Rwanda. All right, well, but she has, is this, now does she have your child or is that somebody else's child and you're just raising them? She has other two children, but she has my child, the last one. Okay. Eight, have I spoken with you? Ago. Have I spoken with you before? We never spoke before, but I'm a member of your uh, patron. So okay. For there, there my was, membership and everything. Yeah, there was another fellow from Canada who had exactly the story you're saying here. So either you're him or y'all, y'all fellas from uh, Africa are doing the most when y'all get there. Uh, look, I'm going to say it to you here like this. First of all, she is carrying your genetic legacy, all right? And that you're, you're never yeah. going to be able to get away from that. So this, I, I don't know where the hell you're going to go that you're going to get away from that. But there's nothing desirable or honorable that's waiting for you. So the first thing is you're already married to the game in that regard. So first and foremost, you have to protect your name. Because if your name ain't worth nothing, nigga, you ain't worth nothing. I'm trying to clean my name. I, I don't want my name to be in the street dirty. I've been in the streets. My name is clean. And I'm trying to let her know that you can't run game on me. I've been in the streets. I've been heavy. I'm, I'm good. I can play you around with other chicks, but I also don't want to do that. Is well, that an honorable thing to say? Yeah, I mean, at, at the age of 42, bro, like I say, we done did that and whatnot. Females go to the streets and stay there out of desperation. As men, we are supposed to graduate to a higher level. Everything's supposed to be about the assets. As we get older and whatnot, the female situation is really supposed to be tertiary, to be totally honest. We're supposed to be all about the assets. We're supposed to be all about what we got built up. We're supposed to be all about that. We're supposed to be all about what we're doing for the next generation. That's what we're supposed but not to be to cut, about. Not, 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 sorry to cut you off, but my paper is straight. I'm just scared that my child will be in running around with another nigga who will cop up with her and then my name get dirty in the streets. I mean, that, that'll that happen from day one is the real issue here. But here's the first problem. Your name's already dirty because you're with her, but you're not married to her. So that's the first problem. You let a chick who's not, what? who doesn't, you let a chick who doesn't carry your name carry your child. So that's the first problem. The legacy, the legacy situation I is already jacked up on that basis alone. She's got a kid. So I got a whole lot else. She got a kid, but the kid's a bastard. Let's let's, let's call it for what it is. You got a child, but the child's a bastard. Jesus Christ! I mean that that you you from day one you out here making bastard kids. So what that says is that your genetics, your sperm, your genealogy ain't worth nothing. We, I mean, uh, uh, right out the gate, the kids is bastard kids right out the gate. It's like, hold on. Well, that's if I'm with Abram. This, this, this is what it means to be Abram's kid. If you're Abram's kid, this is where you start. I'm just saying that's a hell of a spot to be putting them in. So we're already there. So the real thing is, okay, what do we do to clean up this damn rap sheet? Is the real issue. What do we do to clean up the rap sheet? Now, let me ask you something here, dude. I'm trying to, How I'm, the hell? I'm, okay, I'm, bro, you're doing too much talking. You're doing too much talking. You came here to get the game. Soak up the game. You're 42 I'm years old. The game. I'm listening. You're 42 years old. Yep. How the hell did you get booed up with a Rwandan hood rat? Well, I got a hold that hell then. No, 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 no. Answer my question. How in the hell did you get booed up with a Shintiki of the Rwandan hood rat? How did that occur? It occurred because when I came out of jail, she hold me down oh, in a situation and, and I believe her intention were pure. Okay. So, all right. So you did some time. You came out of jail. You was on that prison thirst. All right. 
He got with her and decided I can make a life with her. Well, she was good enough for you to have a kid with her. So I got to tell you, like I tell the females, she was good enough for you to have a kid with her. What's wrong with her now? The attitude changed. Changed how? Changed in a way that she thinks just because she can lay down with me every day that I can get my life elsewhere. Wait a minute. She, she changed her attitude. Say that again. You can't your attitude the way that just because she can give me her body every day that I, I ask for, is that that's the reason why I'm staying for my paper or speech. I'm good. Okay, let me, let me understand here, though. Are you saying that the problem is that all she's offering in the relationship is sex or that she is not performing her womanly yes. duties? Is, is that what you're saying? Yes, she's not. Yes, she's not performing what I what I wish for any female to have a man to call a man. Okay, so what are you, now? Let me. Uh, we need to be specific about this here. How tall is she, and how much does she weigh? And be honest, because she got with a nigga fresh out the pen. So, how tall is she, and what I'm does she skin. weigh? She's five seven. I'm six foot one. I'm a skinny. I'm talking about her. I ain't worried about you. How tall is she, and how much does she weigh? She's size 12. She's 5'12". Five 5'12". Five She's 5'11". At the tall. Okay, you're talking about her height? Yes, her height. She's 5'7", oh, okay. as a height. Okay, her height is five foot seven. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, yeah. what dress size? Okay, this is gonna be real tricky here. What is her weight? Is what I'm trying to find out. She's not a thick chick. She's fine. Right. What? She's how many? How many pounds? How many pounds does she weigh, sir? I I I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't know, but I would say that she just look like Beyonce type or those girls that we can call in the streets. Okay. What size does she wear? We'll have to adjust this for Canada. But what dress size does she wear? I think she's sitting on 12. Okay, she, she's, she's on her way on that heavy side. And she's from Rwanda. So those of you talking about getting you a chick from Africa and whatnot, the chicks from Africa are just about as thotted out. Uh, you had a bunch of chicks from Ethiopia and Kenya all over OnlyFans and whatnot, for those of you who didn't know. So if you think you're going to go to Africa, just understand the American chicks have contaminated everywhere they've gone. They have led a trail of contamination around the world. Everywhere that these American chicks have been, they've contaminated the environment everywhere. White supremacy is global, and so is thottery. So in any case here... All right, dude. Thank you. Here's thank the... you for taking my call, and thank you for everything. And then I just want that advice from you. Well, I haven't given you my advice yet. Okay, go ahead. I'm listening. Okay, you're 42 years old, and old girl yes. here. So far, I haven't really heard what the issue is, except you're talking about she's not doing what a woman should be doing. So, what specifically? What is it that you want her to do? that she's currently not doing and be specific. Uh, okay. Let me be specific. She heard what you said about monk branching long time ago. And she's trying to monk branch on me. And I played a clip that you were talking about women who will hold one leg and put the leg outside. And I said, don't play me. If you were the dude talking, don't lie to me. And she lied to me. And then I prove it to her. And I run the, that the same tape that you were speaking about munching branches, and then she hated that to this day that I hold her accountable for that. And she said, Jason Black is cool you up. Like I suppose a cop into this game. That's what I'm saying. Okay, so are you trying to I'm trying to make out what you're saying here? You're saying that she was talking to another dude? Yes. Okay. Was this another dude and in Canada? That I won't find was, out. Okay, I, I, I got that. I told her, listen to well, I got go that. Ahead, I got go that. Go but ahead. the point is, what you're saying is, okay, your, your broad is out here. She's knocking out kids. She's definitely sitting up here trying to run up on other fellas and stuff like that. And she, she's, she's trying to practice hypergamy, even though she ain't got no tools to practice hypergamy with. That's the real issue. 
I'm going to tell you yes. something. I'm going to go ahead and remind you something here. Females practice hypergamy when they feel certain. They do not attempt to practice it when they are uncertain. And there's usually a catalyst for that certainty or uncertainty. First of all, it's either that the man, the man, either is she feels like she can actually get another one. She's become so comfortable, she feels like, what, well, she got you, she can get another one, so she's not afraid to lose you, either because she thinks she's that good or she thinks you're not going anywhere. So that's usually what she emboldens. She's not going anywhere but my paper is straight. Well, my paper is straight. Right. But, she thinks she can just play me. Right, but here's the issue here. Your paper is straight, but the leadership is not where it needs to be. Because my real thing is taking a look at how you steering the ship right now. I have to ask myself, is this guy going to be a good captain to steer in the future? And that's an issue right there. First, you also got a kid with her. So just understand that's you're going to be taking that out with you no matter where you go. So you got some jankiness going on where she is involved. That's for certain. I'm a firm believer. You don't try to turn a hoe into a housewife. I'm a firm believer in that. You don't do anything like that. Does she work? No. Okay. That's so the she, problem. So she doesn't have a job. No. Okay. For 10, for t- for 10 years in, we're going 11 years in. I take care of everything. Okay. Well, that is that is good that you've done that. How old is well? How old is your child with her? Eight. Okay, folks. You all know that I have a lifelong tradition here. I would never tell somebody to divorce someone, nor would I tell somebody to break up with someone because I'm not gonna come snuggle up with you. She's snuggling up with you. I'm not gonna tell you to break up with her or whatever because. I feel like if you tell somebody to do that, then you need to be ready to go snuggle up with them. Well, I'm not going to take her place. What I will tell you, I though, feel like I'm catching L's right now. Well, you you are. I mean, I'm I'm you yo, you're you're catching L's. At least the version of the story you're giving me is. I would really love to have the opportunity to speak with her and find out what's what. So if she ever wants to call up and talk to me, she certainly has that option. But what I will say is, disrespect is not something you can tolerate. Because the more you She's tolerate upset. it... I can call her and get her on the phone right now just so we can chop this thing up. Oh, well, let's do it then. All right, let's do it. What's her name? We'll get her. What is her name? Her name is, her name is Nadine. Okay, Nadine. Let's, let's get to the business. Wait. Wait for me. Let me get her. She's right here. You thought I'd do this to you? Take the phone call. Jason Black. Hello. I heard you tell somebody is Jason Black on the line. Yeah, just trying to get ready to talk to you. Just I'll be right here. She doesn't want to do it. Uh, tell her get her ass over here. I'm trying. I'm trying. It's right here. She said no. I wouldn't give a damn if it's Bin Laden on the phone. If you're the guy paying the bills. She said, she said, sh- she's supposed she to follow your no. instructions. I don't give a damn if it's Bin Laden on the phone. If you tell her what she wore about what you said, mm, she needs to be worried about what you said before she about needs be, branches. She needs to be more worried about what you're gonna do, not about what I said. So she really needs to be more concerned about mm-hmm. that because, ladies, if your man is calling me, he's calling me because he's already made up his mind about what he wants to do. So if you're lucky. You get to talk to me beforehand. If you're not, you just get to find out what's going to happen later. Now, what she's probably telling herself is that the Canadian courts got her back. And she's going to be able to do X, Y, Z. Now, that's probably what she's telling herself. And for those of you who are not familiar, the Canadian courts tend to be a little more jacked up as far as alimony and child support than American courts are. Here's the problem. 
That ain't no permanent meal ticket there either. Now there's the real issue. There's no substitute for having a man in the home. So do me a favor right quick, will you? Yes. I want you to walk I want you to walk over to Nadine and I want you to put the phone on speaker. And I just have a brief thing I'm going to say. Okay, I'm gonna do that. She may not want to hear it, but That's fine. I did not gladly. What she wants to hear at this point is immaterial. (laughs) Nadine, we can do this the easy way or we can do this the real easy way. But if you think the Canadian courts are going to get you out of this, you are mistaken. So, would you like to come talk? Nadine, would you like to come talk to me now? Jason? Yes, Abe. It's difficult. She doesn't want it. She doesn't want anything that you want to say. Well, let me find out here. How old is Nadine? 42 as me. Oh, she's 42. Okay. Well, I don't know what more you could possibly do with a 42-year-old. I really don't. I mean, I really don't. I don't know how much more you could invest in a 42-year-old. I don't know. I've been deep for 11 years. Okay. Well, what I am going to tell you is that You can buy a lot of things in this world. You cannot buy back your dignity and your respect. You're not going to be able to buy that back. And if you have a female who at her core does not respect you, either because she believes the white government got her back. Okay, if she wants to be in bed with the white government, she needs to be in bed with them. But she don't need to be with you. But what I am going to tell you here is I don't see how you I don't see how much more you can invest in a 42 year old who is a disciplinary problem. I don't care if you got kids. I don't care if you got a house. I don't see how much more you're going to invest in that. I don't, what's the return on, what is the, you got real stuff to take care of. You have a child to take care of and a legacy to build. You don't really have time. I got other children also outside. Dude. All right. Thanks for throwing that log on the fire. Um, but as no, far as trying to throw her on fire, as not, far as she's funny. well, as, as far as she is concerned, let's deal with this catastrophe over here. We'll get to the other ones later. As far as she is concerned, I don't see, I don't really see how much more you can invest in a forty-two-year-old. I don't see. I don't see what you're going to invest. I don't know what you're going to get out of it. What I am going to say to you is, regardless of what happens with her. And here's the reason why y'all can't have all these kids by all these different women, because you can't safeguard your legacy in three or four different households. You can't do that. Well, I got three. Yes, See, you're, you're right. You're actually correct. Okay. You nailed it right there. That's I got, a, I got a, a, a other three children on my own side. Right. And I'm just saying, dude, while you sitting up here sperminating the world and whatnot, dude, you, you, can't, you can't keep these women from contaminating your legacy in three or four different households. You can't oversee three or four different households. You can't do that. They're out here raising your children to look like you, sound like you, have a genetic and financial attachment to you, and yet making it look like you, you just out here doing nothing or doing everything and doing it all bad. So what I will tell you is um, I don't know what you should do for her, if anything. I don't see how you can keep investing in her. What's the return on the investment? And if she is ultimately uncoachable, I don't see anything to build with that. So I'm not going to tell you to leave her. Thanks. I am going to say I don't see what there is to build. But I do expect well, you. you know, I do expect you're not you to telling leave me your to child. leave her, but also you're not telling me what to do. I just ask you for advice. Um, what I should do. My I will, paper is straight. I will I can tell be by you. Myself. Well, I will tell you. I don't see what you could possibly do with that. I don't see what you can do with it, and I don't see. I don't see what you're going to invest in. You can stay, but I don't see I don't see what you're going to get out of it by staying. 
So what I will tell so you is what's alternative? Well, I still uh, what's the alternative? Number one, nigga, you done making kids. That's the first thing. Now I will tell you that one. Uh, no more kids for you. You have my permission to go and get a vasectomy. If they can do a dual vasectomy, I'm talking about tie it with shoelaces and duct tape and welding. Um, yeah, the shop is closed. You done. And at this point right now, Thank it, you needs about, luck. Thanks. it needs to be about Thanks. taking care of the Thanks. future Thanks. and stacking your paper up. That's what it needs to be about for you. But as far as these females, bruh, you're done. The shop is over. You done, you done did been there. You done did that. It needs to be all about getting your paper straight and getting the rest of that straight now. You're not able to handle these women properly. You're not able to handle them properly. You're not able to lead them. They putting you in trick bags. They, they knocking your world off for decades at a time. You're not leading these chicks properly. So it's time for you to go ahead and cut bait and, and leave that to what it is and just focus on building financially and socially for your heirs. That's what you need to be focused on. Thank, thank you for everything. Thank you for the advice. And I'll continue doing that. All right. And I just hope nobody get pissed off when if I mention Jason's because well, no. she's well, pissed off. Because they can get upset. They can get upset as they okay. want to be. It's not gonna get them a man or a producer. She can get be as mad as she want to be. Don't be mad. Be big, big ass mad. Thank you very much for giving us a call here. Boy, these immigrants. Boy, these immigrants. Caller from area code eight three two. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, this is DJ Trillis. Uh, straight out of Houston. My man, Trillis from Houston. What's on your mind, brother? Uh, man, I'm just chiming in, man. Yeah, they, they, uh, that last call, that was a little wilder, but mainly, uh, I'm just going to get back to this stuff, man. Most of these folks just, uh, it's a lot of feelings, feeling type of things going around from what I hear on a lot of these calls. Uh, they need to get more focus, but, uh, Especially with this age thing, I was I, I was messing with chicks probably like a decade ago. But they were gonna eventually become one of these cat ladies, and yeah, buddy, see a lot of cat ladies, a lot of dog lover ladies, a lot of them going around at this point. Well, they're getting That's younger the and younger with it now. It used to be they had to be little old ladies for it. Now they're taking damn me feline classes and trying to be veterinarians at 21 and 22 fellas take uh, yeah. it as a warning yeah. if you meet a chick who's 19 talking about becoming a veterinarian for charge her to the game she's done she doesn't want a man she wants a pet and the reason why they want pets is because mm -hmm. pets don't have demands you don't pets don't have requirements mm -hmm. pets have needs but they don't have requirements and she can decide whether or not she meets those needs or not so fellas if you meet a chick who's into pets if you meet a chick who owns one before she Appreciate meets it. you, take that as a warning sign that she is not suitable. Why? Because she's a person who wants safe attachments. And her definition of safe is, mm. he. This, the, well, the dog doesn't require me to grow up. I can be a big ass child. Mm. The dog doesn't require me to be sophisticated. The dog doesn't require me to learn how to cook properly. The dog doesn't require me to run a household. The dog doesn't require me to get with his program. And a man mm. isn't going to let you treat him like a damn pet. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight. Let me get one more call here. Caller from area code 973. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, peace. How's it going? This is Jason from Newark, New Jersey. Okay, Jason from Newark. What's on your mind? Uh, no, I just wanted to say I agree with what you're saying. Um, I heard the video uh, under the hood and, uh, you know, I could relate. Uh, my first, you know, marriage and son was made because I didn't check under the hood. And, uh, you know, I grew and learned from that. Um, I see a lot of, you know, what you're saying is part of the journey I went through. So I appreciate, you know, going through it and explain it because it's the wisdom and the insight because I learned from that and was able to pick and look under the hood for my next. And, you know, I'm proud of that. It's going well. And I'm, um, you know, I'm still learning and listening to you, but I see the difference in looking under the hood and then even in looking under the hood of yourself as you, um, you know what I'm saying? As you try to grow and be better. So spot on. I definitely uh, appreciate the knowledge and the wisdom. 
Well, thank you very much for giving us a call here tonight. Please do give us a call again. And I mean that about the pets thing, you know, when a person is looking for an emotional crutch, they go off and, and get things. They get pets, they get children, you know, they get house plants, they get weird vocations. They're looking for a crutch. And in their minds, it protects them. Oh, this will be a filler. This will give me something to give myself to. These women who go around kissing their dogs on the lips, kissing their dogs on the heads. You know, the dogs basically got a place at the kitchen table. The cats are eating with the damn family. Pet hair every damn place. She has completely lost what it means to have primary connections to people and instead... Uh, has used these pets as a crutch and a substitute for genuine human interaction. As men, just understand, fellas, take that seriously. I'm not kidding. I'm not joking. When you have a chick who's going around and she's a pet parent and all this old mess, just understand that's not a joke. You got chicks in college. She's wearing her damn college, you know, sweatshirt and whatnot and then got a gang of dogs or one or two or whatever taking pictures of my not take that as what it is that's a very serious issue that's not a temporary thing that's not a superfluous thing that's not an ancillary thing that's not superficial that is a serious thing when you see a bunch of pets around if you see any pets around and if they're young, because it's one thing if they do it when they're older, if they're doing it when she went from middle school to having cats, middle school to having parakeets, middle school to having Doberman pinchers. Just understand that's she's telling you something just like the nerds with their comic books. This is a female trying to tell you something. She's trying to tell you, A, I don't make attachments to other people like that. Just like the male comic book nerds. Oh, he doesn't really make attachments to other people. He makes attachments to books and anime and intellectual pursuits. Well, she's trying to show you the same thing. Oh, I make attachments. I make attachments to pets and house plants and embroidery crocheting, yarn, needlework. It's one thing to have a skill. It is another thing when that has become a substitute. A chick tells you, I haven't dated anybody in five years. Do you have a, a kitten? I got three of them. I haven't dated a man in eight years. Do you have any pets? Oh, I got a dog. It'll always be some specialty kind. I got a dog. So, yeah, when you see that, just understand, ah, she's telling you something. Don't disregard that. It sounds innocuous. It's not. She's telling you in her psyche and in her mind, a pet can take the place of a man. So if in her mind, a pet can take the place of a man, what the hell makes you think that the state or child support or a job can't take your place either? What makes you think that? Then you're going to sit here and be all shocked and surprised when it happens. The class of 2000, I got bad news for you. A bunch of you have been out here. You've been playing the field the whole damn time. You told yourselves there was going to be one, yet one more ticket to ride at the train station. You found out the hard damn way that even your icons that you were following for all these years, all of them are getting their damn tickets punched. Nobody is being spared. Nobody's got a ticket to ride. No one's got a horse to bring them home. You're 40 and finished. Now we need to take a look at you chicks from the class of 2010, 2000, and truth be told, truth be told the class of 2010, and y'all are just about done too. The class of 2000 is done, and the class of 2010, and we just about ready to punch your tickets too now. Can't lie to you. The class of 2010 is just about time to punch your card. The class of 2021, you're up. If you think it's a game, if you think it's a joke, 
you better go check out the class of 2000 and the class of 2010 and go ask them heifers whether or not this is a game or a joke. These young fellas today, they're, they don't have drive. They have had it beaten out of them by their single mother mammies who never taught them what manhood was. They never saw a man's example. They are weak. They are fragile. They pout worse than the damn girls. The girls have the drive and ambition and the boys have the temperamentalism and the fragility. And you're looking for some masculinity and some manhood and you got few options available here. If you think you got the time to fool off and mess around and get tatted up and hood ratted up and get tats, brats and ats, tattoos, brats and attitude, okay, tats, brats and ats, you think you got that luxury, you better take a look at the class of 2000, 2010 and see how that worked out for them. Because they're out here crying right now because they don't have a horse to ride. They don't have a chair when the music stopped. It can be just them or it can be you too. It can be you too. If you are new here to the business, welcome to the program that laid the foundation upon which all of your red pill, MGTOW, high value posers, alpha male frauds, High value fakers and all the rest of them have stolen and ripped off all the shtick that they're over there contaminating and regurgitating and messing up on their channels. You get the straight and the real, honest, accurate, and reliable right here. Get it from the source that all of them steal it from every week before they go to their channels and mess it up. Click that subscribe button. Click that yellow notification bell. Make sure you like the program, but most importantly, make sure you share it. YouTube has us under a shadow ban. They do not share us. They do not recommend us. They recommend the fakers and the frauds to my viewers, but they don't re recommend us on their channels. So make sure you share that. This is the only place that gives it to you. Honest, real, raw. This is what we do. And if you haven't signed up for our patron, hey, the stuff we can't do here on YouTube, there's a reason we got a page when it goes down over there. So go ahead and sign up for that. Description is in the link of the video. My mods got it in the chat room. So make sure you check that out as well. And this concludes this broadcast of the business. I am your host, your brother, your humble servant, Mr. Jason Black. And until next time, my brothers and my sisters from around the world, remember, handle your business or your business will handle you.